Welcome. Hello. Hey, everyone. It's watching. us. Welcome back. Welcome to uh, Root. Uh, we're Legends of Vantress. Uh, you probably all in chat know us. Uh, we are uh, a bunch of seven nerds embarrassing ourselves for our, your entertainment. Uh, I'm going to do the same spiel, uh, you know, obviously truncated because we've done two sessions of this biz before. Uh, this is a system based on Root, the uh, woodland game of might and right. Uh, a game of woodland might and right. And uh, it is by uh, Leader Games. It's our favorite board game. And uh, this uh, RPG that we are playing is not Dungeons & Dragons. So let's all sever the connection from our brains. It could not be further. Uh, it is a 2D6 system. Our players are only using 2D6. I am the Game Master. Yeah, I'm shocked we don't have the... Uh, I am the Game Master. And uh, I roll no dice at all. And uh, so what happens is basically we're, it's not my story, we're telling the story together and we're playing to find out what happens. So that's the big thing about a Power by the Apocalypse style game. Uh, it's not some grand epic overarching plot that uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm writing that the players are playing through. They're the ones that are driving the story and I have to just fucking pull straight out of my ass. I'm a church dream. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, it's Woodland Critters. <laughs> We have, uh, yeah, woodland critters, and even though they are woodland critters, uh, there are a lot of um, a mature themes in this uh, campaign. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff. And For, instance, a lot of murder. Murder. Yeah. For instance, murder. For instance, murder. So, um, I think what we'll do is, uh, can we just get another uh, brief overview of our characters for everyone? Just sure. a, a couple sentences. Uh, unfortunately, Nikki is, uh, is feeling poorly tonight, uh, so we wish her a speedy recovery. And so just the three of us, uh, just like last time, but we'll keep switching around and uh, we'll drive forward and have a wonderful time. Uh, Grumley, why don't you start? That's oh, hello. Works. My name is Grumley. I am a uh, pug arbiter. I go through the woods and try to protect the downtrodden. Uh, and then help these guys steal things. <laughs> Hello, I'm Hazelnut, and uh, I'm a chipmunk food thief. I'm roly poly, and I'm always looking for a snack. <clears throat> I am playing Booker. He's a raccoon vagrant, a literal con man. My class is the hustler. Uh, he suffers from wanderlust, and he's always looking for the next easy. Uh, Con that he can pull on some unsuspecting fool to separate him from his money. Great. So our party of vagabonds are traveling through the Dimwood. It is a woodland uh, where there is a great power struggle between the uh, invading army of cats, the Marquis Eight, that serves the Marquis uh, de Cat, uh, which is uh, warring against the great eerie dynasties, uh, birds of prey, a uh, squabbling aristocracy that... Um, that used to rule the forest and fell to civil war and are trying to reclaim what, which they believe is rightfully theirs. Uh, the party first uh, had been traveling together for about six months and uh, their, their fate really changed when they ran into a great horned owl that was a defector, a spy master of the Eerie dynasty, saying that there were four ruins uh, with artifacts of immeasurable power when all con uh, when all combined together, which would change the fate of the Dimwood, but he was releasing that burden onto them because he had to go look for his daughter and wander the woods. The party then went to Reconnoiter Ridge, allegedly the first location uh, of the first ruin, and uh, they got mixed up in, in a power struggle. The, uh, the denizens of this mining uh, town in this clearing, uh, which is a, a clearing of a, a, that's rich with iron ore. And they got mixed up in a power struggle with the denizens and the company, uh, the Smiles Mining Company, which is uh, inst installed by the Marquise, uh, basically uh, uh, having unsafe work conditions, almost uh, nearly forcing the miners to... to to, to work, and uh, all simply due to the swipe of a pen or a paw uh, from the Marquis A. And uh, the party decided to work with a, a sketchy saloon keeper, a badger, named uh, Selgin Alabaster. And, uh, and uh, due to a, 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 the, the, the session last time started with a chance uh, meeting with uh, the, the gray cat, uh, Levi Smiles, who runs the whole operation, uh, having a confrontation with Selgin and our vagabonds, where he wanted to uh, basically uh, 
drag out and execute the man, the fox, that had been causing trouble and trying to organize the workers and trying to uh, start uh, try to de- trying to destabilize the operation of the Smiles Mining Company. The, Very important note. Yes, we, we ate peaches with authorized. Yes, in the they oh, ate peaches yeah. at the meeting. Oh, we did. Yes. Did I enjoy it? Yes, you did. Yes. Immensely. Oh, Immensely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you took like all the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> You, uh, the, the party then, uh, uh, sat down and agreed that, uh, even though Smile seemed to be a pretty bad dude, he was far more concerned with his operations and many miners had, uh, been going mad or, uh, falling sick and dying, uh, due to, after they, uh, bored in deep into the, into the hills and, uh, 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 uncovered a cavern that was absolutely rich with iron ore, but uh, anyone that went in there uh, would either go mad or die. And the, the party offered to investigate it. Uh, and as vagabonds, uh, it was that's the kind of thing that they do, do take jobs that no one really wants to. So it was Peggy that had the idea, uh, once the deal was agreed upon, that uh, they would go figure it out, they would get paid, and they would also, uh, that, that Levi Smiles would allegedly adjust his business practices and not uh, and stop murdering people or having his skinkerton uh, mercenaries murder people. And uh, Peggy had the idea to craft them all masks. So in order to, uh, to filter out the air down in the mines, they decided to go uh, collect giant spider silk. Uh, they got into a, a large a battle with a giant spider out into the woods, uh, slaying it and collecting a ton of materials, uh, poisons and, and silk and fangs. And uh, in the process, they uncovered uh, a, a, a canary who had been captured after getting drunk in the creek. It was a drunk canary named Mary, uh, Mary Glitter Gulch. And, or Mary Canary. Or Mary Canary. Canary. <laughs> or Mary Canary, uh, who, uh, agreed to, uh, who agreed to help uh, guide them in the mines eventually. They also uncovered uh, a box of soap from old Soapy, who had uh, been scamming people with soap with a prize inside. <laughs> And who had been slain, they took the soap, encountered yeah. some de- deadly forest mushrooms, and uh, eventually crafted the mask and went to the mine. Before they entered the mine, they met the chief geologist of, of Smiles, a, a weasel named uh, Mr. Y. And he was going to go join the party, but because they had a guy, they were able to convince him, the uh, very scared weasel of the horrors that lay in wait, uh, in order to stay outside, but not without starting to co- making him and the Skinkertons that he was with question really how much uh, Levi Smiles cared about their safety. The party then went in with Mary Canary <laughs> and uh, un- went into the large chamber with her guidance. Uh, but, and their gas masks seemed to work. They did not go crazy. They did not die terribly. And they uncovered an ancient ruin, stone structure. Oh, thank you so thank much, you. Pleasant oh, 13. Thank you very much. You're so pleasant. You're so pleasant. Oh, get better, Mickey. Appreciate oh, it. Thank you, Pleasant 13. We'll pass it along. Yeah. Um, and a great keep. Is it, a te- it was a temple. Of the uh, the blazing heart, allegedly some sort of a uh, stag king. Oh, for one can play so much. Underscore, so much. guys. Wow, eleven months. Whoa, I almost got that hot dog. Thingy. It's almost our anniversary. Yeah. It really is. And inside a huge statue of said king, stags in this world and deer in general are myth. Almost people don't believe that they exist. They're not seen around the woodland. And they're, they're, they're rumored to practice horrible dark magics. And this seemed to be a king, a, a deer king, who uh, uh, conquered much of the evil beasts within the forest. And the great mural painted a picture of some blazing king with a banner, a flaming sword, a crown, and an amulet. The amulet they saw around the statue's neck that was open with a flame in it. Peggy leapt up and closed it. And went, as soon as she closed it, all of the orange vapor particle fog that had been in this cavern uh, got sucked into this, uh, this, this device. As soon as they took it, the temple collapsed and turned into rubble. But this chamber was now free to move about uh, and safe to breathe. And as they left the mine, they then saw uh, Levi Smiles, who was getting ready to greet them. But it was uh, at that very moment that he let out a uh, death gasp as uh, he was stabbed in the back 
by uh, Mr. Y, Mr. Y, the weasel. And uh, fell, a and what a fell down, uh, sl- his corpse slamming down on the ground in front of the party. And that is where we'll begin our session. Mm. So we're like, we're like not close to it. We saw it happen like up on the hill, right? It, we weren't that close. No, he was about, and, and you're almost there. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, okay. So we're close to You're like down below, and he's up there, right? On the balcony? No, I thought he, well... Go ahead. So, <laughs> we're, we're confused. <laughs> you are all standing, all four of you are standing uh, in front of the wooden uh, watchtower at the center of these mining operations as the uh, bloodied corpse of Levi Smiles lay simply 20 feet from you. Uh, his, the, the wound in his back deep and his uh, his previously pristine clothes stained with blood. A number of skinkertons armed with hand crossbows uh, are flanking Mr. Y as he steps forward, pulling out a handkerchief and wiping the blood off of his blade as he uh, uh, inspects it and tucks it into his pocket. He, uh, he sheaths the blade into his coat and he looks down at all of you, and he says, Well, my, oh my, what a tragic thing for Mr. Smiles to be murdered by vagabonds. Oh, my acorns, what, what have you done? What, 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 you son of a bitch! You killed him, why would you kill him? Did I kill Mr. Smiles? Did I kill Mr. Smiles? And he turns to either side of the pinker t- of the skinkertons. As every <laughs> single session, I'm going to do that. As uh, he turns to either side, and uh, they all shake their head. And uh, there's absolutely no way you're pinning this on us. No way. He's trying to say we did it. No, not today. You're going to pay for your crimes. People are going to know about this. Is he like up on the on the, the railing? Yeah, so he's up probably about two stories up looking down on you. And then you now see as the Skinkertons all pull out their hand crossbows and are all le- uh, leveling them at you. Are they armed? There are uh, six, three on either side. Uh, this, this, we, we got ourselves in quite the predicament here, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I don't really know how we're going to see our way out of this one. We've got, we have witnesses! How do you feel you're going to pay every... Uh, how many people are there? Is, is Mary there? So, you see that Mary is there. Mary uh, is just looking down at him, at, uh, at the, the bloated corpse of uh, Levi, as uh, she is taking the opportunity to tear her mask off, and she is uh, uh, downing a, uh, a bottle of whiskey, and she looks around and says, Well, I don't know these guys. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just a drunk. I ain't see nothing. I, 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 what, what, what? You, what are you gonna, you gonna, what are you gonna do? Shoot us dead in the street? You, you think that you're just gonna get away with this? I mean, people know we went in there. You're not gonna get away with this. Can, can I figure out, Mister White? Yeah. Uh, so to figure it out, he's going to do one of those moves, and he's going to roll two d six, and we'll see what he gets. And you're gonna roll cunning, I believe, correct? Uh, charm. Charm. That's right. Uh, nine. So, with a nine, unless someone wants to help you. Oh, hell yeah, I'm helping him. What does How it are you cost? Help him? One's exhaustion to help. Uh, to so, let me think about this. Well, you're trying to figure him out, so it's like an insight check. Yeah, basically. Um, basic, okay, so what I'm going to do is, after having said that, I noticed Grumley, uh, I noticed Grumley looking at Mr. Yeah. Y a bit more intently. And I say, uh, I, I know this, I know this type. I know what he what he looks like, what they do, what their aims are. Look, look for it. Look for it. You you know you've seen the pattern. You know what to look for. I'm looking for it even more now. <laughs> and you succeed. What do I know about this? So guy? That's what do I take? Stuff. What do I take? One exhaustion. One exhaustion. So you add a- <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can read the sky up and down. Um, I'm going to ask more questions now. What does uh? Ooh. What is this? What does this character intend to do? It might be obvious. But. You get to hold three, right? Yeah, so yeah. I don't have to ask them right now. So, okay. so I will answer, and I have to answer truthfully as the Game right. Master. So, Mr. Y 
intends to uh, exploit the arrival of vagabonds uh, in order to A, get vengeance on Smiles, who was sending him into a sure death trap. And his morale shaken by your conversation, particularly Peggy's um, uh, seed that she was sowing, um, he is now attempting to uh, take over the operation, perhaps, with the backing of the Skinkertons. He seems to have a pretty... He seems to be very smug, but he seems as if he's going to pin it on uh, on the vagabonds that rolled in as a very convenient excuse as to who would kill Mr. Smiles, especially ones that are allied with Selgin Alabasta. Um, what does he wish we'd do? He wishes that you would... Mr. Y wishes that you would cooperate and be turned over to the Marquisate as a prize. However, Booker knows the type and knows that a sniveling weasel, literally, like this, would probably be open to other alternatives and has contingency plans as well that you, that you as a group may be able to exploit. Um, how... You can, you can hold the last one if you want. Yeah, I'm going to hold the last one. Okay, so you're figuring him out. As he as he uh, leans down and uh, says, Now, I, I, I wouldn't want any more bloodshed to happen after poor Mr. Smiles met his untimely end, but I would ask that you join my associates here down to the Marquis eight troops, so we can turn you in, and I can tell them everything that happened. Now, hold on right there. One second. You you, you don't think for one minute that they're just going to accept that we, we, we murdered some guy. I mean, we have we have the Grumley in our party. The Grumley. We, yeah. You would think that we haven't done any work for the Marquis eight? They know who we are. They're not going to believe that we killed Levi Smiles. Yeah, we, but it is. You got to think about this a little bit more. Heard. That is uh, orange and has the cat emblem on the front. You take us to the monkeys, eh? They're going to know in a heartbeat that you're lying. They're like best friends. It's like right on his shirt. They never believe. They know my character. You can find Sheriff Beatrix. She can vouch for me. Uh, he looks at it and he uh, pulls out a separate handkerchief, the one that isn't stained with blood, and he taps this, the side of his mouth. Um, before uh, reaching in and grabbing a flask and taking a little nip, uh, and he uh, sticks it back in his coat pocket as he then dabs his, the sides of his weaselly snout again. And he says, Now, when was the last time you donned that filthy thing? And I don't know who you think you are, who uh, Sheriff Beatrix is, but it is the Levi Smiles mining company that provides the iron ore for probably the weapon that you hold right now, friend. And you think you're just going to take it over from the guy that built this company? Just by killing him? Yes, I've been not trustful of Mr. Smiles for a long time, and anything I say now won't matter because you all are up shit's creek without a pen. Hey, it's not exactly wrong. Um... All right, so let's just say for one minute here that we comply and you don't shoot us in the back as we go to the Marquis 8. Then what? Then they take you away and they hang you, I assume. Not today. Surely there must be some other agreement we can come to before you just send us off to the gallows. Well, I believe that this entire mining company has my name on it. I'm the chief geologist. I am the one that is able to find the iron in the earth. Mr. Smiles liked to think that the earth spoke to him, but it was really me whispering into his ear. What do you have to offer me? What? I appreciate your help. I assume that it is fine down in the mines, but either way, I suppose it does not matter, does it? We don't deal with your type. Backstabbers and double-crossers. 
Can I get a sense of like how this building is arranged? Like, <laughs> I lean into Grumley and I say, I do if they're coming, hang us. Yes, yes we do, Grumley. We need to make sure that we stay alive. Uh, so it's a large structure. You get the sense that it is, um, what's a good, like, now, if you play World of Warcraft, like the Venture Company, uh, like tiered kind of wooden structures yeah. that have like offices kind of on either, on each floor, and then each of them has a balcony, and then there's like a kind of a wraparound uh, staircase going up. And is he on a balcony? Yeah, so he's on um, two balconies up. Yeah. Do you think you, you think we should deal with him? I mean, I don't want to. He's clearly a scumbag, and he's probably gonna backstab us too, but I'm certainly not gonna march on to my own death here. What if we get him to backstab one of his guys instead? <sighs> I mean, uh, uh, which guy? I mean, he's kind of the top dog now. I didn't really see anybody below him except for those skin Any of those, any of the six crossbow, or crossbowists? Crossbowmen? Yeah. Crossbowmen, that's the word. Do it's any of word. them, are the any of them one. the one that beat up Basil? What are they called? Uh, are um, Do I recognize anyone? I would say that you definitely recognize that there is one, he's looking a little stiff, and you occasionally... <laughs> so he's not dead. He's not dead. Uh, and I'll say that you're able to look up and you get the sense that the other Skinkertons are kind of also giving him a bit of a side eye as well. Hmm. Hear me out. So, he's got six guys right now. Nah, at and least. One of them's one of those jerks that was beating up Basil. That's true. I'd recognize that face anywhere. So and I really recognize the crossbow. Use math and, and get him on our side so... He gives up that guy, and instead he gets four of us. That's one for four. That's a business guy's deal, right? The only problem with that plan is that these Skinkertons, if you know anything about them, they work for nothing but coin, and lots of it. And we, unfortunately, barely have two coins to rub together. Literally, I think I, I, I literally have no coins. <laughs> what do we need coins for? I don't think they're that easily bought. We don't have to buy them. We just say, hey, Mr. Weasley Weaselman, we can just say, hey... If you turn that guy in because he's a real jerk, then four of us will help you. That's one for four. And Peggy's smart as shit. <laughs> oh. Uh, I want to use my last one. Okay. Uh, how could I get Mr. Y to let us go? And saying there is no way for you to do that is an acceptable response. Uh, well, that would be an acceptable response. You're exactly right, but that is not the case in this situation. Oh. I would say that what... Uh, Hazel is suggesting would be absolutely a way. If you can offer some kind of deal and have it instead pinned on the one Skinkerton, it seems, depending on your, your case, uh, he may be able, you may be able to come to some sort of arrangement. So in the context of this game, these are things that only Grumley knows unless he tells us, correct? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's like an insight check. You, yeah. This is a feeling that you get, and we don't know, right? Yeah. I assume that's meta-knowledge. But feel free to tell me otherwise. I'll say that's probably accurate, yeah. I think that plan will work. You think so? You're not just saying it? No, I think it will work, but we can't send this poor innocent... Innocent? Stink. He almost shot me in the face. Well, I mean, you were there, innocent. and he almost killed Basil. But we're not going to frame one guy in front of the other guy's crime. Watch me. Mr. Y! <laughs> yes. I very, very, very much prefer not to die today or tomorrow or until I am resting comfortably in my bed someday Me many, too, many years sir. from now. Me too. Is there any way that we could meet in your brand new lovely office that you've just now inherited and, and have a little bit of a discussion? Now, what do you have to offer me at all? I'll need some sort of proof that, you, that, that this claim that you have something to offer me. Some sort of proof. I, I mean, we, I'm sure that we can come to some sort of agreement. Uh, I, whether it be we do some work for you, as you see, we do some pretty good work. Uh, we, we get things done. That's what vagabonds do. Uh, hey. um, and Peggy, uh, she knows how to do all kinds of things. She got us into the mine and we didn't die. She is very creative. And she's ingenuity. got a very keen eye. She could probably Ingenious double, though. triple what is you're it, trying to do in there. It's at this point... I would say, uh, whoever would like to make a persuaded NPC. Please do. <laughs> Charm? Damn, I got a six. 
Yikes. You can assist me to pass with with re- somebody can assist me to yeah, pass yeah, with repercussions. Well, Hazel is you help me out if you're willing to take an exhaustion to help me out. Then we yeah, get a, we uh, get a pass. You could argue, yeah. So on a set, uh, you don't have any boxes more, unless you've been tracking. I keep track of it on my phone. Here, sorry. So that would be I a seven, which says they there. aren't sure. The GM will tell you what I need to do to sway them. Okay. So uh, it's at this point that you'll remember that Peggy took a huge chunk of iron ore in the mine. And if you offer to give that to him, he may be able to just up front. Peggy, you are a genius. I can't believe I forgot about that. What my friend Peggy here is trying to say is that we found quite... Quite the treasure down in the mine, and I know that the original agreement was that we get to keep whatever's in the mine. But we aren't that stingy, my friend. We are not that stingy. We might be able to show you something pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, as Peggy pulls out the huge chunk of iron ore, um, he he looks down at you in his little weaselly beady eyes narrow, and he says, "Well, I suppose you all are posing no threat to me at all." You can join me in my new office. And he uh, he uh, steps through the large double door to the top of the structure. And uh, he says, come on up. As uh, you see that the Skinkertons will begin to walk down to then guide you uh, up into his office. As they, uh, as they like, get to us and, and, like, you know, I'm assuming they're pretty gruff, I'm going to, like, turn my pockets inside out and basically be like, I don't have any weapons. See, I got nothing. I got nothing. Search me. Search me. They all search you. Uh, they take. They'll try to take your weapon. Uh, are you sure about this? Uh, and I'll give him over my, my okay. weapons. You hand over your weapons. How about you, Hazel? Uh, you can have this here. Yeah. I'll give him my dagger, but I need this because I was walking and I'm real tired and I'll lean on my staff. Yeah, mine. <laughs> and they all uh, they guide you up to his office. As you enter, you see uh, this uh, elaborate desk that says uh, L Smiles on it. And uh, you see that the, the dirty boots stained in mud and soot of Mr. Y are uh, kicked up onto the desk. As he's pouring, uh, he's, uh, he look, takes his flask and throws it behind him as he pulls open a drawer. And this uh, pulls out a bottle, massive bottle of absurdly expensive whiskey. More expensive than anything you all have, have probably enjoyed, and he uh, he he looks at the the array of glasses on um, this uh, little uh, whiskey cart, and he uh, just shrugs and starts to to drink out of it as he places it down. And uh, you see uh, Mary uh, is kind of shuffling in the back uh, as he looks around. Like, well, I guess if I'm gonna fucking die here, at least I I would like. It. Fucking drink of that. Hey, I'm hey. pretty sure I remember you saying you didn't even know us. Well, I got mixed up in this. These, I was just trying to fly away, and I face planted. I beat planted right into a fucking rock. And so then this scaly, ugly, mug son of a bitch collected me, and now here I stand before you. Oh, well, you, you really, you really swift us. You understand? Well, I don't think I have a fucking choice. Do I have a choice, Scaly? Do I have a choice, Ugly or Scaly? And she points at the <laughs> at the two of the lizards, and uh, they all uh, sneer at her and shake her, uh, shake their heads as they pull up. Uh, they kind of press their crossbows even even further in. And well, I don't. I'll have a fucking drink of that. And uh, Mr. Y looks up and uh, shrugs. Well, I suppose if. I'm going to hear a business proposition. We should do it in the appropriate style. And he pours out uh, a glass for each of you and slides it over. All right. That's a be good. He is to avoid the gallows. Cheers. Yeah. Well, I would hope that anything that you do propose is adequate. I would not count on avoiding the gallows. I am still very connected. You don't stay with beside. Besides a very powerful cat, for as long as I have without greasing a number of paws. Well, um, I think that on behalf of the group, 
we've got a lot to offer and you've got a lot of work ahead of you and you're going to need a good team. Oh, absolutely. As you already seen the work that we can do, it wouldn't behoove you to pin any kind of death on us and get us killed when you could use us to your advantage. Yeah. And uh, at this point, the uh, eye, the massive uh, a sheet of iron is a uh, place on the desk. Uh, and uh, he looks at it and he pulls out a strange uh, spyglass looking device and he examines it as he's uh, looking at it. Now that is a sight to behold. And you're saying now that my miners can go in there, and they are my miners, that they can go in to the mine and retrieve it without going mad. That's the idea. Well, we think that that's the case, right? I mean, we certainly haven't gone mad, at least last time I checked. Of course, now I'm in this situation where all I really wanted to do was go explore, but <clears throat> by all means, no, we're not crazy. And that was thanks to us. Because of us, you're able to, to, to go and mine all that all, all that ore. So let me ask you this. Hey, Rich, you need someone to pin this uh, unfortunate accident on, correct? Well, it's not going to be me. That is true. I would never suggest that, my friend. So, in that case, um, as you know, you've inherited all of this lovely, lovely new things. You are a very rich man, my friend. I suppose I am. So these, uh, skinkatins, you know, one of them might be, uh, dispensable then. And I eye them all. All of the, uh, all of the skinkertins are, like, suddenly taken aback as they're all, like, looking, looking around. And all of their eyes are kind of lingering more on, uh, Phil. <laughs> the skinkertins. <laughs> the skin Why do you have to name him? <laughs> Phil. I'm Phil. I mean... I, and I, you know, I don't mean to overstep any boundaries here, but I take out a coin and I say, but if I had to pick, and I flip a coin, it lands in my hand. How about that one? And I point to Phil. <laughs> and, uh, and I give him a wink because I recognize the damn crossbow he's holding. As he, he looks, he, <laughs> he seems very sti uh, stiff. And uh, I say, but why me? I, I, I didn't. And uh, Mr. Y holds up his paw. As he, uh, and silence falls over the room. And now why would I trade one of these fine mercenaries for the four of you? Well, again, these, uh, gentlemen, they are, uh, I, sure, I assure you there are more than just the ones that are in this room, for one. And you get rid of him, you get the four of us. That's one less guy you gotta pay. I'm not working for this guy. Well, of course we're not. Kidding me? Of course we're not working for him. He's not gonna pay us anything. He gets us for free. What, was he, what do you mean by that? Gets us for free? We are buying our lives back, Rumley. Well, that doesn't mean he gets us. That means we get ourselves. Very good, my friend. You're a sharp one. Yeah. And what? What are you all going to do for me, then? If you are indeed going to be worth one of the Skinkertons. And I, why well, I do think that I would be able to do whatever I wanted to any of these six fine lizards that flank me, and none of the others would tell, isn't that right? And they all look kind of nervously back and forth at each other. I still don't know if I can trust four lowly vagabonds. Well, of course you can. But that's what good faith is. Surely you're trying to expand this operation, correct? Surely, not too far from here, is the Grizzle Palm Mountains. What lovely treasures might await in the Grizzle Palm Mountain range, my friend? You're the one with the eye, the nose, for the metal. The Grizzle Palm Mountains. No, I mean, it's just I'm, I'm no geologist, my friend. Uh, not, not like the great Mr. Y, but I'm only spitballing here. If, if uh, you know, uh, some might say stalling, but I like to think uh, ad-libbing and, no, uh, you know, proposing good ideas. There are lots of rocks in the Grizzle Paw Mountains. Um, and you like rocks, it seems. So uh, there are lots of things you like up there. There's rock. And I bet there's probably some iron up there, too. But the key thing to remember here is you've just inherited a whole... a whole... 
job site and you can't just walk away from it now. So maybe Absolutely you right. need a scouting group. And that is what we're really good at because we're great at moving around from town to town. If you send some of these little lizard friends, they're just going to get ed up or something. Well, I suppose that is an interesting proposition. Now, I would suppose that if I do want to expand, there are a number of clearings that the Smiles Mining Company could expand to. I do need additional ore. Grizzle Paul may indeed have that. Their denizens may be even more difficult to get beneath the boot, being as f even farther on the edge of the dimwood. It is something that Mrs. Smiles had been attempting, but had not been succeeding. Then there are, there's the matter of Shiven. The River Folk Company has been less than agreeable to our operations and has gouged our shipments up and down Old Tom's River. Now, if we could get something, if... Anywhere along that river, if you have connections there, I may be interested. I... My friend, you would not believe it, I do know the otters very well. Now, is that so? Well, where I'm from is one of their main bases of operation. Say so? He's from Muckbed Creek. Oh. Yes, he is. Now, do you hmm. speak the, uh, the otters' language? That's a great question, Game Master. I don't know what kind of language they speak. <laughs> Clams. Oh, of course, yes. It's, it's their say. Where there's muck, there's clams. And if there are going, there's going to be increased iron ore mining, then there also may need to be some encouragement of the more established Marquis 8 in order to expand their operations as well. Further, further into the Dimwood, connections there may help as well. Roughly what time is it? Uh, it is like past sunset, so it's about evening now. The, the, the uh, lantern light is flickering in this office. Well, Mr. Y, sir, uh, this is all very, very lovely. Very high level overview. Lots of details. I'm sure we can hash them all out. But, as you may see, my friends and I are very beat up and worn out, and we would really love to just get a little bit of rest and maybe some food and some nourishment, mm -hmm. and then we can get right back out in the morning. What do you say? So are you going to be my forward man? That's certainly what it sounds like. Oh, I think you're getting a real deal out of it. As long as you don't hurt Phil. I won't hurt Phil at all. As long as you don't have someone else hurt him. What the Marquis 8 does to any of these lizards is not up to me. I wash my hands of the situation. It's either you all swing from that gallows or somebody. Well, it's not going to be us, I can tell you that grumly. And all I'm asking is that we resume talks in the morning. I know that I think better after a good night's sleep. Make a persuasion. Uh, not a persuasion. Uh, persuasion NPC. Basically persuasion. Twelve. Nice. Twelve. Okay. Uh, I will say he uh, says, well, then I suppose you'll be staying and sleeping on premises. I assumed you wouldn't have it any other way, Mr. Y. Sir. You can find dwellings in the first floor reserved normally for guests that are from the Marquis Zaid overseeing the operations. But you must understand that the accommodations are still better than what you're used to. Oh, of course, and I promise you, we won't make a sound. Very well, you will be watched. And uh, he, he nods at all of you and says, Good night. As you're all led uh, out, and as all the skin are getting ready to lead you, um, you hear the voice call out from behind. Now, Phil, please come back. 
and Phil looks very nervous as he uh, steps back into the office. And you're all guided down to the first floor. There's uh, a door with a number, uh, a, a room with a, a row of uh, beds on either side. That's what you and- get for crossing Booker. <laughs> Uh, beds on either side, uh, and you are uh, you are alone. There are you do get the sense that as the as the as the, as the evening goes on, that there you hear the footsteps and the shuffling and the the shadows cast from underneath the door of the Skinkerton's garden. So, what I would like to do from an out of character perspective. Uh, whatever conversations that we have in the room are going to be very low. Yeah, yeah. You, mean, we'll, yeah, you don't have we'll to. We'll just talk. Just talk normal. But we are very deliberately, yes. or at least Booker's going to very deliberately talk very quietly. I would say that's fine. In the room. Before either of you say anything, just understand I did what we needed to do to survive. All right? Secondly, I planned on getting the hell out of here in the cover of darkness, but I should have realized that he was going to stick the bastards in front of our door. I'm still open to ideas. I don't intend on working for this fool, but I'm not going to die. Not today. No. So we do what we got to do, even if it even if it means getting all the way to the Grizzle Paul Mountains and then making a break for it. We need to help Phil. Do we? Fuck Phil. Hey, we're going to send some guy. He's not innocent. But we're going to let Mr. Y get off scot-free you, and uh, this skinkerton to, to hang instead? You keep this in mind. You, cross, you put a crossbow in Booker's face, Booker gets even, all right? And he was going to kill Paul Bay, so... Exactly. That guy's getting his comeuppance. Well, but not for this particular crime. It's not right. Well... I ain't worried about it. What if... Do what you got to do to survive. Live one more day. That's it. What if, um... What if uh, the body just like disappeared into the river and floated away forever more? What what body? Mr. Smiles. Well, I, I guess well one it, we it would determine on where they left him. I, I can't imagine that his body's just sitting about on on, on the third. I should have thought that earlier. I was just really hungry and he was talking a lot. <sighs> but well, well, they, I think they, they must know that he's all, he's just going to disappear. Oh, he left town. Yeah. Had a very successful mining company. Decided to leave. I mean, even if his body were to wash up downriver, I mean, what would that accomplish for us? I don't know. No body, no crime in the river. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it works that way, Hazel. Uh, we are very much in deep, deep shit. But I hate shit. I'm not exactly. I, I'm still not opposed to either uh, just fleeing, which wouldn't put uh, you know Selgin in a great position. I, I must admit. But or we try to make a break for it as soon as we can. As soon as we get the hell away from this clearing. I know it's not the most courageous thing, but we're severely outnumbered here. How many Skingertons roughly are on the premises, do you think? There are six total, uh, including Phil. You know, the Phil, at the very least, was upstairs. That would be five. I'll say that... We heard any body, like... I would say whoever wants to read a tense situation... uh, This is very tense. I think that that would count. (laughs) A tense situation could probably get a sense of... It shouldn't be me. I well, it was your question. I, did, I figured if you, unless you don't want it because of your stats. Cunning. Cunning. I can do it. My cunning is yeah, next. I'm happy to do it. I'll do it on behalf of Grumley. Oh. S- saying that, is that okay? Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Uh, just, he said the question out loud, yeah. and I'll be like, oh, yeah, let me, let me, let me read a tense situation. Well, I got a seven. That is technically a pass. So you get one question here. Oh, what's the best way in, out, through, Ooh. the biggest threat? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I want to know what's my best way out. Even, uh, even, whether And I'll phrase the question in so much that out meaning with our lives intact. Like, how do we get out of this mess? Whether it be through the cover of darkness, playing along as long as we can, whatever, right? That's where I, I will say that there are... Mo- I guess that this is a GM, so I'm able to say whatever I want. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would say that, there are, that, there are, that you are listening... And you notice that there are two Skinkertons that are stationed on the other side. You get the sense that if you're sneaky enough and quiet enough and either kill or take out the people you may be able to sneak, depending on how well you can get out. You know that you have a drunk canary with you as well. That could be one way to do it, but it's very dark and you know that this mine has been abandoned and that um, Mr. Y is keeping others away because of what he's done. He doesn't want news word to get out yet that uh, Mr. Smiles had died. Um, uh, 
or there's the alternative of trying to make some kind of arrangement. But you, you would understand that for Vagabonds, uh, you know, you know that the Skinkertons can be rough customers, but you handled one before. There are multiple options here. Um, is there a window in the room? Um, you look out, and there's one very small window. It doesn't look like it can open. Right. And it looks and out. And wrong it's, it's, <laughs> it's, out, it's looking out onto the, uh, onto the camp, and you just see the, the rows of buildings and the flickering firelight down past the, the mines and pretty far away. Well, I'm still not opposed to sneaking out under the cover of darkness. That being said, I'm not much of a fighter. And anything that we do is going to draw attention. Uh, unless we can somehow deal with the Skinkertons out front. I think we smash our way out of here. It's pretty loud, Gromley. If we can do it quietly, I'd be with you. There's only five of them left. What only we, five. What if we invite them in here and they can have um, some of this booze that I found a while ago? I didn't steal. Oh. I didn't realize you were holding out on us. Well, you had a little bit, if I remember. I share. Very booze. fair. I yeah. can have a little more. Can I have a little more there, Cheeks? If you play your part, maybe. Do I, what, what, what part do I got to play? I, I was in a school fucking play in sixth grade. You play the part of doing whatever we tell you to do. You saw what I did to Phil, right? You what? think I won't so throw some drunk out of the, under the bus? Well, I don't think that'd be very uh, heroly of you. Do I look like a hero to you? No, you look like a raccoon. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that got me. Poor <laughs> That's a great idea. Invite them. Invite them inside for like a game of cards or something. Oh, yeah. You've got cards, probably. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure that the Pinkertons are anything about uh, playing games, but what if one of our uh, lovely party here were to get very, very ill? Why is everybody looking at me? I've got an idea. Let's invite them in for some booze and some, some playing. And then Mary will get, I used your thing, because that's what you do when you're scheming, and I'm, I'm learning. Um, Mary will get real sick and then bend over and, and make a lot of noise, and then they'll go, oh, no, what's wrong? And then they, when they turn their back, we'll just boop, bonk them right on the head. Grandma's good at that. Leave that to me. I think that plan is perfect, minus all the gaming and boozing. Oh. Those, those gentlemen are not going to be swayed by anything like that. I'm telling you, the only thing they want is money. Well, what if it's a game for money? What if yeah, it's some kind of England. poker game? And free booze. I didn't take that as a skill. Take what is your skill? There's a skill called Let's Play. Where oh. you can play a game or some skill or like for Damn gambling, it. yeah. <laughs> and like try to like fuck it all. I have too many good abilities. I should have taken that instead of buffing my luck last time. Uh um, well, all the way. If you, lose, if you want to swap it out. No, 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 no. Can you no. not play if you don't have that skill? Or I can't. Well, no, I just can't use the ability let's play. I could make yeah. some shit up and like, try to like, right? sway them or whatever. Them this has like very specific. Well, if you want to get them in here, the best way to do it is help, help, you know, the the classic help, help. See, he's injured. She's injured. Not, hey, do you want to come in and play games and drink? Because they're going to be like, fuck off. I'm going to stand in next to the, right next to the door and you just figure out what we're doing. And I just want to, like, stand up and just back against, like, the as the door opens, I just want to be blocked by the door and just wait there. All right. And crack my knuckles. <laughs> well, are we all in agreement that this is the direction that we're going I'm just in? seeing, like, a shadow across the pug <laughs> face. <laughs> are, are we all in agreement that this is the direction that we want to go in? Because once we make this choice, there's no going back. Absolutely. What, what should I say? What should I do? Just look very, very concerned. Like this? Oh no, Mary! Why would you all do this? No, no, stop! No, please! Oh no! Make a trick an NPC roll. While he's screaming, I'm gonna open the door. You gotta help us! I got a please. five. Can I help you? Oh, no. Can only one person help? No. Yeah. So if you each help, we make a seven. Oh, 100% help. I'll do, Does uh, an eight do you better than a seven? No, no, okay. no. It's yeah. either got to be seven I can or help ten. You too, but just it doesn't matter. If you each help one, I get a seven. Okay, so I marked one exhaustion. Yeah, I'm gonna help you also. How are you guys helping? Um, uh, I'm I'm gonna just like pound the ground a little bit to make it sound like <laughs> you're beat up. That's good. <laughs> I'm gonna open the door and go. Oh my gosh, the whore! She's going crazy. Help us! 
Um, okay, and so you can choose one. Um, I would say... So, so if if they... I would say they stumble and you gain a critical opportunity. That, that's what I was going to pick. If yeah. it looks like they're coming into the room, yep. I would like them to stumble and, yep. we, and we get a critical... Anybody probably gets a critical opportunity. <laughs> So because I'm I'm writhing on the ground in pain. <laughs> so and you do, and then you, it takes a minute and you see Mary kind of blank and she said, "Oh, that's right, you stupid fucking are you rooting out of your oh, fucking yeah, chair?" Yeah. 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 I'm pretend to hold her back. How dare you steal my fucking back. booze? As uh, she she's crazy with with booze lost and stuff. It's awful! <laughs> ah! So just like screaming and rolling around on the ground. And suddenly, uh, that you hear the jangling of keys from outside through the cacophony of your act. And suddenly, the door swings open and two skinkertons walk in. And as the door <laughs> swings open, it bumps about halfway and the ground leaves for <laughs> Not all conceiving him. But as they see, uh, Mary is just standing over you, and she actually has like a, hu- like a huge knife drawn. It seems like she had somehow uh, started away. <laughs> uh, are they both in the room? Yeah, is the door still, still open? So the door is this door is still open, and you see Booker on the ground as uh, Mary is standing over him. Uh, both Peggy and uh, and Hazel are looking very concerned, and then the door stops, and there's like literally a quarter of rum like is covered <laughs> by the door as the as you now so are facing the back. So once they walk in, I'm gonna shut the door and sort of pan to me, and I have that like anime shadow. <laughs> <laughs> this big menacing hulking yeah. beast behind the door, and I want to fucking just punch punch the guy in the back of the head. So critical opportunity is what? A critical opportunity is basically you have an opportunity to react. So they are they are distracted by this. Uh, so for the first guy, I would like to basically beat the shit out of him. Okay. Um, attempting to not kill him. Yeah, but hit him in a way where it would not. Is that sword to sword? Uh, let's see. What are the battle moves here? Engage sword to sword at close range. Uh, or I can grapple the enemy. I can disarm them. I don't have respect. Oh, you don't have the thing. Just kidding. Uh, I would say that could be an engage, either grapple or engage sword to sword. Whatever you want to do. Um, because I want to. I'm gonna engage sword to sword. Okay. Because I don't know how much health these guys have. Yep. I'm just gonna go. You're at close range. Boom. Uh, 11. 14. 14. Uh, so I get to choose three. Holy shit. Uh, I'm gonna inflict serious harm, suffer a little harm, and, uh, <laughs> dismay my foe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> you see the, the anime shadow of Grumley as he leaps forward, the door slams shut, and with a massive uh, pug fist, smashes into the back of the skull. You hear a loud crack as the eyes roll back in the skinker tent as a falls down, and uh, you see the other one uh, fling around, and out of surprise, he fires off a crossbow bolt uh, slicing into you, Grumley, for one point of injury. But as soon as he sees the sheer devastation with one blow that he did, he's looking back, being looking very scared. As, as soon as he fires off the crossbow uh, at Grumley, I'm going to just jump up and, and grapple him. Okay. Using my leather my leather armor. Okay. You uh, do that. I still have my armor, armor on, right? Yes. Uh, so the arrow proof, ignore the first injury I would suffer from an arrow in a scene. Yep. So, so yeah, it, would just, it, it just tinks off your armor and, and, armor. Boom, yeah. and it clatters to the ground. Is there a weapon move for grapple? Yes. Yes. That's probably not going to be very good for me. Uh, I can grapple an enemy at intimate range, roll with might. Oh. <laughs> Come on! Oh, baby. There we oh, go. Fuck. It's unfortunately a nine. Uh, so on a seven to nine, we choose simultaneously. Continue making choices until someone disengages and dies. Um, oh what God. I'm going to do is, in grappling an enemy, uh, oh, I guess we get to choose simultaneously. And so you, so let me know when you're ready, and we'll both say at the same you, time. You leap up past Mary, like, oh, fuck, and uh, you knock a bit as whiskey flies over and coats this one skinker tin uh, as the bottle shatters, and uh, you fly a uh, raccoon attack and, <laughs> and grapple on, and he turns, and we're going to three, two, one. I strike quick. a fast blow, inflicting injury. Yep, so they're both going to... So, oh, you do that too? Okay, yes, so 
so with my flexible, in, I get to mark an igno- exhaustion to, to ignore the first first choice. Okay, so you manage to so wiggle out of the way. It, it's injury for exhaustion. Hits, hits his armor, and you manage to do one, one injury to him. Yes, and it, you you, you uh, as you're grappling, you punch him in the face as uh, it hits his armor. It's, it is not able to hit you, and you're still grappling. Question. Yes. Did we get our weapons back? No. No. Okay. Uh. I would like to just assist in any way I can if I can uh, rough the guy up. Oh, so I guess we keep making choices. You keep making choices, right? Oh, yeah, keep going. Um, I'm going to... uh, I'm going to exploit weakness. Mark exhaustion to inflict two injury. Okay. I'm like, I'm just like, like trying to wail on this guy okay. and I claw him out and like, I'm, okay, I'm, so like, you do this. I'm just like flailing. And he's it's gonna, not he's going to strike a, a quick blow that is going to hit you for one yep. injury. But however, you use, you use your strength and you heave and you go, and you, uh, basically I'm like bite him a little. You bite him and he lets him, and he, uh, just the, the sudden, uh, uh, he, he leaves a opportunity from the bite of the, and you use that opportunity to clock him right in the side of the head, and he, his eyes roll back and collapses. There's two unconscious skinker tins. Okay. All right. All right. We gotta go. We gotta go. We can't stay here. That went pretty good. We gotta move. We gotta get out of. We gotta get the hell out of camp. All right. We gotta find Mr. Watt. Can I feel around what? the pockets for keys and stuff? What do you mean what? What do you mean we have to yeah. find Mr. Yeah. Watt? We have to you, turn, you him, in, turn him in. Turn him in. He killed yeah. Mr. Smiles. Okay. No. No. We're if bleeding. we leave him, he's gonna kill more innocent people. He's we gonna press the money. We have to get the fuck out of town right now. Come on! Not until I find Mr. White. I'm gonna open the door and like and try to like drag him. I want to pick up Why? one of the unconscious guys and just smack him until he wakes up. I mean, we gotta go. <laughs> so you manage to find. Um, He's like smacking him, and I'm digging in his pocket. <laughs> I'll say like, you find enough him. gold to all uh, uh, remove one decay oh, off of them, okay. and you also find um, a ring of keys. I never have decay. Is there any benefit to me finding gold if I don't have decay? Yeah, you can. Well, we got a bag of coins. Oh. So you can you can add that to your bag of coins, I guess. Yeah, if you have you have the bag of coins, you can add it to that. I think we got that last session. That. You weren't here. So oh. the idea is that you can just like you know if you need to exchange a coin for something. I'm like, gonna give myself a coin. Is that acceptable? Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So I got yeah. A coin. So you do that and you find a, a ring of keys. Okay. And keys. Yeah. I want to just keep smacking the guy until he, like, trying to shake him out of it. So one is uh, on the ground uh, cold, and a Booker opens the door, and the lizard is, is, is jostled awake as he looks at you. His eyes are kind of rolling around. Uh, I'm going to say, you better be quiet. You better tell me, tell me where Mr. Roy is if you want to keep your life. Uh, make persuade an NPC. Eight. Eight. Okay. Uh, basic moves. Uh, oh, basic. Yeah. Sorry. Um, they aren't so. Uh, what you pick? There's a bit of fear. Persuading NPC. So yeah, they're not sure. So you see, oh. the, you see the fear in his eyes as he looks around, and you get the sense that um, he is very nervous to go against Mister Y. But if you gave him some kind of promise or or uh, tell him that there, he's not going to... You're not going to have to worry about Mr. Y if you tell me where he is. Oh, my lord. I'm going to put him away for the rest of his life. I'll let the Marquis eight figure it out. Oh, we're not going to get out he, of this alive. He backstabbed Mr. Smiles, and the people need to know. Uh, he's going to say, oh, he, he's, he's up in the, in the top office. Uh, Mr. S- Mr. Smiles has, has a bedchamber up there. I'm sure that's where he's staying. But there's more of us. Uh, where are they? Where are they, where are they positioned? How many more? Uh, there's... There should be a ship. Four more of us, but I haven't seen Phil all night. Oh, no. All right, well... I, Grumbly, there's no way I can convince you to get out of town. Thank you, I'm gonna knock him out if I can. <laughs> I'll say it's easy enough okay. to just, just, he's totally helpless. I'm gonna take, do, do they have rope on them? I wanna tie them up with, with um, their own they, rope. They have um, actual like manacles, like in chains, okay. not like just like rope on their side. Could we manacle them with their own, with their own like yeah. manacles? Yeah, I'll say that's very easy to do as you okay. manage to manacle both of them. They're out cold, it looks like it's gonna be hours before they're up. Do they only have crossbows? Yeah. All right, well, uh, I didn't want it to come to this. I pick up one of the crossbows. Are you sure about this? Because there's no going back, and there's a very good chance that we're going to die going up against Mr. Y. The whole point of this was to get the hell out of town. We are going to get out of town. 
But not before we, we take care of this guy. Well, you better take the other one then. Fine. So we get your. You got a crossbow? Yeah. It'll be better on you. I got these. That's all I need. What about you? crab claws? I'm the, well, they're not literally crab claws, but crab I'm just trying to motion to my hands as in, I don't need it, I don't need it. You're you're <laughs> Oh, oh, we should go with them. Do you have oh, extra ammo or anything that I can take? Or am yeah, I there's a number of bolts. You have enough bolts. All right. Yeah, you. Okay. Yeah. Right, so and and just so I understand, the weapon move is target someone. Yes. I don't need to have that. No, if options. you wanted a quick shot or if you wanted right, I can't whatever, do special you can't shit. do that, but you can just target someone. Okay. All right. You all take hand crossbows. Okay. Um. Let's go. Uh, all right, Grumley, lead, lead the way. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty roughed up. I'm like yeah. disheveled and I'm bleeding a little bit. I want to, I guess, walk carefully as I can, but the second I see anybody, I'm just going to like bum rush them and just try to run, run at them. I'm going to lock the door as we leave with the keys. Okay. So, but you go out and you uh, lock someone. As you're entering, uh, or as you're leaving... Uh, you hear that there is that the that it's actually really loud. Even though there's a lot of commotion downstairs, you remember that sound of the slamming mining uh, machine was echoing through everything, and it's it's automated, and it's the it's the technology of the Marquise. And even though it's far down, uh, it's automated, or there's a handful of miners down there that do not are not poking their uh, their nose into anyone's business. It is so loud; it's this cacophonous uh, roaring. And uh, you, however, hear the footsteps of three separate uh, footsteps coming from the floor above you from the balcony. Oh, you hear that? They're coming. All right, Grom, I'm going to lead the way, and I'm going to try to be a good shot with this thing. Look, are you not so good uh, you're okay? No, I'm very oh, convinced we're going to die. Lead everybody upstairs. <laughs> Stay behind me. All right, of course. Okay, so you're not sneaking. You're just, you're just running up and just trying to bop, bop. Yeah, as quickly as I can. Yeah. Okay, so as uh, as you run up, you just start booking it, and all, f- all the whole lot of you are running up, and you see that there's the center, uh, the center office level, the, or the second level, uh, as uh, the, there's the wraparound balcony. You see that there's uh, a, you see the the shadow of a skinker tin uh, being projected from behind, and you see two whip around. As uh, as they level their crossbows at you, and they say, "Wait, what's going on? What do you do?" I'm immediately going to try to fire at one of them. Target, okay, I'll target somebody. Okay, uh, it says when you target a vulnerable foe at range. It's vul- vulnerable. Is meaning is it there? It's you're, you're, they're, you're both. I'm vulnerable. just gonna try to fire as soon as he yep. questions us. Yep. I need to roll very high because it's finesse, and I get minus one. <laughs> Damn, it's a five. So I'm just, I'm gonna miss. Okay, so you miss as you fire off, and it flies off. You're not really used to having a crossbow. He returns fire, and it, f- it actually uh, pierces your shoulder. Ah! Okay. You take one injury as the crossbow, as he starts to reload. What are you guys doing? Uh, I want to uh, run at him, and uh, I get... Yeah, I'm, I'm basically just gonna, gonna run at him and try to try to like like elbow him in the face, or like like sh- shoulder into okay. him. Uh, uh, roll um, an engage sword to sword, I guess, right? Yeah. Nine. Okay. So I will uh, inflict. Um, uh, what is the? Uh, sorry, sword to sword. I'm gonna inflict serious harm. Uh, you're inflicting serious harm, which would mean that two, that's two injury for you. Injury. Um, uh, he uh, he manages uh, to you smash him up against the railing. He lets out a uh, a cough of uh, of blood as if you're sickening crack uh, as he uh, as his back kind of snaps awkwardly against this railing. He looks incredibly rough. What are you doing, Hazel? I'm gonna He's still... shake my little my chipmunk tail and go, oh no, and run backwards a little bit and try to use rope a dope. Okay. Um, so when you evade and dodge your enemy so as to tire them out, you roll with finesse. So I'm kind of like, I don't know, and like trying to get him to chase him. Trying, trying to chase Okay, him. so you're the one that, that shot Booker. And he's trying to reload. He's like, okay! Yeah. And, he's, and he's like, yeah, stand still! Okay. Um, while she's doing oh, no. this. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, boy. Uh, that's not good. Uh, so what four is... plus, so seven. And what, is, what does the move do? Um, ooh, well, you got a seven? Hit, yeah, on a hit. I forget, is Which that? Said, yes, center nice like, hit. Oh, cool. So on a hit, I can mark one exhaustion to make them mark two. Oh. Oh. That's actually really good. So I'm going to mark one exhaustion, and he has to mark two. See, okay. Seeing her do this, and this guy's attention being drawn to her, yeah. I'm going to have been reloading, and I'm going to fire at him. Okay, again. so he is focused, and he's like, ah, 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 
<laughs> and he uh and he uh fires off. It's an eight. An eight, okay. Uh so that is just a one that's just uh, on a hit. I think it's one damage. Yep. Right? Where's the weapon moves? <laughs> so <laughs> um, copies. Yeah, I think it's just you roll finesse on a hit, you inflict injury. So on a ten plus you just shoot again, that's busted. But yeah, he takes one. So um as as he <laughs> is that, son uh, of a bitch, he's exhausted as he's or he he's he's trying to aim and he, he's distracted. And uh he does manage to fire off a bolt, but because he's so exhausted, it just grazes you. You take one injury, Hazel, uh, as you're distracting. But however, as he's distracted, uh you all hear a gurgle as you're sprayed with blood as Booker's crossbow bolt flies through this skinker tin and he collapses off of the balcony. Uh, uh, but, uh, Grumley, what are you doing? Is he, is the guy that I knocked in still up? Yeah, he's still up. Okay, uh, I will, I'm just gonna try to hit him again. Okay. Whoa! Uh, oh, fuck. Max roll, uh, hit f- <laughs> uh, is, are you gonna try to kill him? No. Okay, so he looks like he's pulling out a blade as his uh, crossbow falls to the ground, and he pulls out a blade, and uh, he's trying to stab you, but you smash him in the face. Uh, and Grumley, however, as you do that, you feel a pain in the back of your uh, shoulder uh, as the other Skinkerton appears from behind the corner and fires, and uh, the crossbow bolt shoots you in the back. Is this a oh, new no. scene? Uh, no, it's the same scene. Okay, it's all the same scene. It's all the same scene. So, uh, as it pierces and take one injury, um, what, what plate armor will take that? What is it? Who's still up? Uh, the one that had been walking away is now, he, uh, he's seen one friend just dead from a crossbow bolt through the neck. The other one knocked up, out, but, uh, slumped over, get falling down into the dirt below. Is he, like, aiming his crossbow? He's aiming his crossbow. He just shot Grumley. You see, uh, it, it, it doesn't pierce the flesh, but it, uh, it pierces through his pit plate armor, damaging it. Okay, I'm gonna rush forward with my, with my staff and, okay. um, just try to knock him. Okay. Can I do that? Engage sword of sword, yep. I can yeah. engage sword of sword. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, oh, it's right here. Yeah, so I will just try to, like, whack the, the, actually, I'm gonna, oh, I can't disarm him. Yeah, I'll just try to hit him with yep. my staff. My walking stick. Oh, shit. 11 plus, oh, I don't have any. Yes, yeah, that's, that's oh, a success. Shoot. It's a 10, because I've never yeah. had one might. Oh, yeah, there you go. So you get to choose three. Okay. Um, I inflict serious harm. <laughs> I impress my foe. And <laughs> you shift your range to intimate or far. So that means you either jump closer and get like right up in his face, or you actually like disengage and get back. I'm gonna disengage and get back. So you like jumped in, bopped him, and like bounced out. Okay. So um as... Oh, I was only supposed to pick one, right? Oh no, no, three. on a ten pick. Right? So yeah. um as as uh, you see that uh, that this uh, person uh, is, as you smash in, and he looks incredibly weak as you hear uh, the cracking of bones, and he sees incredibly impressed, like his eyes are wide, like oh, not bad, and you <laughs> manage to Thanks. you manage to uh, uh, and you manage to dodge out of uh, this strange uh, blade that he has as he swips it forward, but uh, you manage to avoid the injury, but uh, you take one exhaustion as uh, the, uh, the the act of leaping back. What uh, happens when my exhaustion falls up? Uh, if you are just too tired to do anything that would normally No, if you take an exhaustion after it's full. Yes, okay. after it's so full. So I have yeah. four exhaustion. Yeah. Um, so, so that guy is now unconscious? No, he's still up. He's, oh, he's looking very wounded, though. What do you do? Uh, I'm gonna just take another shot. Okay. And try to, try to finish him off here. Yep. Bingo, nice. nine. So nine. I inflict one. Oh, no, it's a ten. I'm sorry. Ten. So I actually had to shoot him twice. Bang, bang, <laughs> you hang of it. As, or no, no, you you know what, just for flavor points, you see the uh, the, the other hand crossbow and you pick up both and go, <laughs> bang, bang! <laughs> and, and, campaign. <laughs> um, there will be no judgment, mercy, and redemption. Have, having seen him drop to the ground, though, I'm going to, like, hobble over to him and, like, throw the crossbow down and basically be like, I'll, I'll be better off with this. And I want to pick up his knife that he okay. put out. And, yeah. Um, Come on, Grumley, we gotta. We, I, I want two more, right? One or two more. Oh, no. There's only. There's one more. What? Hey, one more, and it's Phil. Oh, oh Phil. I, uh, I lost he's count. just Phil. I lost count. And he needs to die anyway, because if I'm gonna die for this, then he's gonna die for no, this. No, he's not gonna die. To you stunt. Grumley, go! Lead the way! And I wanna go and find this Hawaii. 
Um, as you're making your way uh, through kind of gathering the things, you see that the door is cracked open to this office area. And you see a shiny glint of the, the lantern light. And you see a familiar sight as you see your great sword propped up on the side of uh, inside this in, this in this room. But we don't hear anything coming on from the, the room? Second, no, you listen, you hear the slamming of the, the mining machine. Um, but in this office that's right there, you see your equipment in there. Uh, I will burst into the office and grab my sword. You burst in, you see a number of documents all over. You see a few uh, crates and barrels, and uh, but you all see uh, your knife. You see uh, you don't you don't give up anything, but uh, your um, the things that Peggy had had given up from the tarantula, all that shit is all there in a crate. And you get your great sword, Grumley. Uh, is he down here? Well, where is he? On the second floor. He's on the third floor. Oh, my bad. I made a mistake. I'm losing a lot of blood. <laughs> I, I, are you all right? Are, are you are you good to keep going, leading the charge like this? Keep going. I'm gonna take a look around before we go out. I'm moving a little slower than the other two, and just see if there's anything valuable in here that I can take. Um. Yeah. Uh. I'll say that you take a little bit of time, and uh, you look around and you find that there is a number of um. You find a, a silver pocket watch. Ooh. You find. Uh, you find a silver pocket watch. You find a uh, set of um, beautiful uh, uh, survey instruments, uh, all all plated in this uh, maybe is a beautiful gilded material. Um, I, I'm going to notice Hazel taking time yeah. to do this. I'm going to walk over and sort and say, uh, I, I, I need a minute to, to, to maybe bandage myself up a little bit here before we go on, but uh, I, I noticed you eyeing some of these beautiful, beautiful things. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you need help with that? Well, I guess. I'm happy to help you load it up. I, I still got a little bit of uh, 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 gumption left. Oh, so, um, nice. so what I'd like to do is mark a decay if I yeah. could to like try to patch myself up a little bit. Yeah, to, like, you can do that. Injury. You can do that. Um, so yeah. I'll, I'll trade a decay for an injury. Yep. And then I want to two decay for injury. That's fine. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Two decay for injury. I, I have to because I'm bleeding. Is there out. anything I can do to get rid of um, exhaustion right now? Well, we're working on it. Oh. Perfect. So and then I want to help her find like the most valuable shit in this room. Like like we're talking, you know. Are you being stealthy about? It? No. Fuck okay. Because no. we're we're, so, we're, we're yeah, so you're so you're you're oh. just uh, yeah. you also have a potion. Oh, a snake, snake oil. oil. Yeah, you, you have snake oil from last time. Last oh, time. I do. Okay. So if you have, does that clear it or uh, two? It is two. Well, let's see if we can find something really, really valuable first. <laughs> yeah. We're looking for very valuable shit. Something very valuable. Okay. So as you're looking through, uh, you find a set of just a very, uh, very nice survey material. And as you're going through, uh, you take a little bit more time here as you're patching yourself up and scouring the room, not trying to be stealthy, that you are digging through these things. You see like these things of soot and you see this cloth and you're not sure that you're going to, uh, that, 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 that it's anything. But then you decide to stick your little paws in there and you feel around and you feel something hard and smooth. And you look in and fold it up along with uh, bits of pebbles and uh, some scraps of iron. Uh, you see... Uh, uh, gold nuggets, and you see, uh, you see three uh, gems of this strange oh. kind of uh, orangey color, almost of the same oh. color of the particles that you saw. Hey, um, amulet. That's my girl. Nice find. I love this stuff. Mama always say that too much honey makes the pores sticky, but I think it's a good thing sometimes. I have to agree with you, my friend. My oh, you are you are very very good at this. Do I feel a little less exhausted for finding something so valuable? How does that work? The better you? question is, did we steal something very valuable from a very powerful faction? I would say yes. Then we both clear our exhaustion tricks. Yeah. Good? No. 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 When I steal something valuable or important? So this, this would work. When you selfishly steal something valuable or important... Well, Booker has Mine just money. says, uh, family, after you Hazel and I pull off things. It says, it says uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I thought you were talking if, about greed. If, blah, 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 blah. When I help them fulfill their nature, we oh, both clear yeah. our exhaustion oh, tracks. Yeah. So, so you, you both yeah. clear So you both clear. You feel, as soon as you find this valuable business in here, uh, you uh -huh. suddenly feel hey, like... Hey, Zeke. How's it going? Hey. Jay Dinks. Thanks for hanging Jay. out, everybody. All right. Hi. 
So you know? while they were doing that, I just would have kept going. Okay. Um, and just looking for yeah. Mr. Y. We gotta catch up with Grumbling. So can. while you're doing that, Grumbling. Come out, you coward! And I wanna like break the, like, bur- if, if the door's shut, I will break it down. The door's shut. Okay. Uh, I would say it's not hard to break down. Do you, or do you wanna use crash and bash? No, I mean. Oh yeah, come on, baby. Unless if, it costs if, you. If I need to, I will. I would say it's, it's a flimsy wooden door. Okay. Uh, it's locked, and you uh, bash the door off. Yeah, if you don't mean to, you still crash and bash it. <laughs> <laughs> and as and the scene that you see is um, uh, in front of you. You see that there is a small door in this office where you had a meeting with uh, with Mister Y, and you see that the door uh, is 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 slightly open, and there's a flickering light uh, off to the side. It's, it's not flung open; it's cracked open. However. And you see the same office that had been Mr. Smiles, and you see that the uh, that the, the placard with L. Smiles is on the ground, and you see that, the, that there's broken glass all over the ground, as the bottle uh, of nice booze seems to have been smashed, and it smells of, of 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 thick alcohol and whiskey, and you see a shape on the desk that is very slightly moving. And in the darkness, the, the, the slight flicker of the, the, the torch, or not torchlight, the uh, the lantern light, candlelight, you see uh, the shape as you approach of Phil uh, beaten to almost a near bloody pulp. Barely hanging on, it seems, but still on the desk. And you see that his hands uh, and his legs are bound. As uh, this is what you see. Is he conscious? Uh, uh, he's barely moving. You're, it's hard to tell. Uh, I'm just gonna leave him, and okay. I want to go into the closet that has the light flickering. In it. Okay. You open, and you see a small uh, bedroom, and you see uh, you see the uh, you see that there is a bottle of whiskey that is almost uh, towards the very bottom, and you see a shape in this very large bed, obviously built for the large cat that was um, Levi Smiles. As you see, uh, you see some movement in this bed and some fur. As you see the weasel shape, as he begins to stir, his eyes kind of flutter open. He seems to be very drunk. Uh, I want to. Uh, <clears throat> are there any manacles lying around? Not that you can immediately say. Um, I am going to uh, pick him up by the scruff and punch him in the face. <laughs> Okay. Uh, do you not, not, not like not like hard enough to like, knock him out, but just to like. Ruffle okay, up, I'll say up. you don't even need a roll for this. <laughs> as he uh, as you uh, lean down and you grab uh, him by the scruff, and he's just out of it. He's drunk, and you uh, manage to smash him in the face. You hear a loud crack as one of his teeth snaps off and flies across the room and clatters. And he's like, "What the? What are you fucking doing here?" Mr. what's your real name? I'm not telling you my name. What the fuck is your real name? And I want to hit him again. Make a persuasion check. What's your name, bitch? Seven. Seven. Okay, what does that do? Um, uh, he's unsure. He looks at you and says, Who wants to fucking know? And he spits blood in your face. Oh! Um, you could probably... He seems to be very drunk and a little bit belligerent now. Uh-oh. Um, uh, you may need to continue to beat him, threaten him, come up with some way in order to, to put the fear of a uh, pug into him. The fear dog. Fear dog. Um, do you want to live? <laughs> yes, I want to live. I can kill you right here, right now! Do you want to die? Have we caught up yet? Uh, I'll say not quite yet, because you had to basically, well, yeah. you case the we joint. We selfishly did what we had to <laughs> yeah. do. Grumley, hopefully Grumley didn't notice. <laughs> Uh, as, uh, uh, he looks at you, and, uh, he says, What are you, what are you gonna do with me? I'm not gonna kill you, but I need you to confess that you were the one that killed Mr. Smiles! And I'll rip him out of bed, and drag him into the office, and sit him down at his desk, and then pull out, I'm assuming he's like paper and a quill. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need you to write a confession note right now, and you sign it with your full name! Shit! And I'm gonna be like holding him on, on, the, on the, the, the back of his neck, 
Okay, make him another persuade, uh, make persuade an NPC move. This is ballsy af, and we're all gonna, we haven't died yet, it's pretty amazing. Uh, seven. Seven. Um, it's- I wanna punch him. Okay! <laughs> to, 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 Just to, to drive I will say, uh, you punch him again, and another, a tooth chips and flies out, and this seems to have done the trick. And <laughs> at this point, Hazel and Booker, you, um, you uh, walk in as Grumley uh, is standing over a very drunk Mr. Y as he um, as he is uh, signing um, as he's writing very kind of sloppily but trying to stay focused his eyes are wide, his mouth is bloody you see a bloodied uh, 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 Skinkerton Phil on the desk to the side as a very angry pug is uh, basically grabbing the back of his neck and forcing him to, to, to sign a confession. I'm going to close the door behind us as we come in and say, Grumbly, Grumbly, are, are you alright? I'm fine. Huh. He's confessing. Are, are, are you sure? I look at him and read what he's writing. You read what he's writing is a little bit difficult given the uh, the, the penmanship uh, in his current state, but you see that um, that he says, "I Wilbur Yates uh, murdered uh, I Wilbur Yates murdered um, Levi Smiles um, on X date." Uh, in order to X, Y, and Z, and I will cooperate Ugh. with the appropriate authorities uh, in order to spare my life. And then he does some kind of signature, and uh, you see, like, do you have my my seal? It's it's in it's in there it's in, it's in there. And he like points. I put the drawer oh. completely out of the desk. <laughs> <laughs> it clatters as, the, as you see wood splinters as Grumley rips it off, and uh, you see that there is the that gold seal of 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 smiles. But then you see that there is a uh, a very uh, basic brown uh, sealing wax as well, and you find a, a small a small seal, and he uh, he drops it on, he stamps it, and he s- slides it forward to you. And he says, uh, are you done beating the shit out of me? Well, yes. Hold on. <laughs> Maybe. What's the what's the most valuable thing you've got in this room? It doesn't have to be yours, it can be Mr. Smiles. No, to be fair, I think we already cleaned him out. Well I was done. Just there, look right? around, where is Mr. Smiles' body? Oh, hey. yeah, that too. <laughs> That's... But also we need goodies. It's in the tool shed just down the ridge. Well, that's not nice. Have I seen it before? Like, yeah, you guys passed like a tool shed that had a bunch of equipment and actually right by that huge uh, machine. Um, as uh, you you case the joint and you find um, a collection of very fine uh, whiskeys. Uh, you find um, a, uh, a nice set of, of cutlery and utensils, as well as uh, silver cups and candlesticks. Um, but it does not seem uh, to be... Uh, and then you find uh, a satchel of gold on his person. It seems as if Smiles was not foolish enough to keep a lot of valuables in this office. Um, and you get the sense that the gold that he had in his pocket, uh, you actually see that there is the uh, the velvet, uh, there's the velvet symbol of uh, the Smiles Mining Company on it. Uh, but it's a large satchel of gold. It's what a night. All right, now we got the we got the confession. We got the seal. We got everything that you want, right, Grumley? Yes. Can, Can we take this man to Selgin's place? Keep him alive. Maybe take this sorry son of a bitch with him. I point to Phil, and uh, you know, keep everybody alive until we can clear our names. Sure, sir, sir, right. Soldier might be pissed, but I don't know where else to take him. We don't know if they've even sent word that we were the ones that did it. Tell him up. Aye, aye, Captain. Maybe we can just leave Phil here. He might die anywhere. No, we're not going to leave Phil here. Look at him, he looks terrible. Ew, I want to just look around through the town. He's going to die. I want to pull out uh, a, like a medicine kit and heal him up. Okay. Okay. Why does nobody remember this man? I'm going to shoot me straight in the chest. You... I remember. Thank you. You do that, and you patch him up. He looks a little... He's alive. He's, Damn it. <laughs> he's alive. 
I think he's gotten a pretty good punishment though. He's got his ass kicked twice now. Fine. He's got his ass kicked and we were going to frame him for something he didn't do. It's the worst thing to do to somebody. He nearly got free for the other bad Haven't you seen Les Miserables? That's the whole point of that show. I just, uh, I, sit, I just pull out one of the chairs like in the office and I like, kick my feet up on the desk and go, meh. <laughs> Look, let's just take Mr. Y, Mr. What's you say his name is? Wilbur? His name's Wilbur Yates. Mr. Yates, Wilbur. I think we're on first, first name basis now. Let's take Wilbur and take him to the, to the authorities. Well, let's get him to the Pearl first. It's late. It's very late. I don't necessarily want to be traveling through the woods to a different clearing with these people and stuff. I'm just saying we should take him with us so, you know, if we run into any more of the Skinkertons, he can tell them to back off. Of course, we're taking everybody to the Pearl. Okay. Because Mr. Alabaster will know what to do. Okay. Let's go Alright, well, we're going to take Mr. Smiles' corpse with us too, into the, into the Pearl? No, we're going to leave that in the tool shed. No, I'm not going to leave it in the tool shed. Well, I'm not carrying a corpse. He's already dead, Grandpa. I'm carrying a corpse. Well, who's going to carry Mr. Y and, and, and I'll carry Phil. Mr. Y. I've got two shoulders. All right, fine. Fall. I'll get Phil. You... Damn it. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, like, I'll, like, bend over and, like, try to, like, hoist up Phil, like, on my shoulder yeah, and just, like, get him up. Yeah, he's a, light, a lighter lizard. He's a bit of a smaller uh, gentleman. Yeah, all right. you managed to get Phil on your shoulders. Yep, yep. I don't know if you can hear me, buddy, but you're good pal Booker, so I suggest you straighten up. And he's like, Booker, I remember... And he passes out. And I'll just kind of like drag him along, you know, and, and set lead up, like, 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 wrongly lead us to the to the tool shed and then the pearl, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to throw uh, Mr. Y over one shoulder and then we go down to the tool shed uh, and I'm going to grab the body of Mr. Smiles, throw him over my other shoulder and uh, walk, I guess. Somebody throw like a cloak over me or something. It doesn't matter. What, what, it, who, who, there's nobody around. It, it, this place is a ghost town. Uh, as you're, you, you, so you go into the shed. You find the uh, the the corpse uh, flies uh, covering him of of uh, Mr. Smiles as he flies over, and then suddenly you see a shape emerge. You see a uh, a, a ragged looking brown furred fox with a lo- leather hat as he is extending a large kind of tarp thing, and he says, "I haven't made it this fucking far. Pick sick in my nose where it doesn't fucking belong. Here, take this." <laughs> as uh, he throws it to you, he's like, "I didn't see fucking nothing," and he just goes back to tending the mining machine. And my man. As uh, you now have a tarp uh, able to kind of cover your shoulders and the bodies. Thank you. Uh, we should go quickly. Uh, uh, all right. Th- th- thanks for your help, good sir. We'll uh, see you around, maybe. Uh, well, be well. I wouldn't count on Stay it. safe. <laughs> And we'll just and take everybody. Continues to go back to the huge machine that is just boring into the uh, into the earth, into the hills, and uh, and you manage to uh, make your way through the streets. Uh, there's a number of Skinkertons walking around, but they seem to pay you no mind with assistance from a stranger that you uh, that you got. And you uh, find your way, you find your way uh, to the pearl. As soon as you enter, uh, it is. It is so late at this point that it is probably the, um, that they've just kind of cleared out. There's just one, a slumped, uh, over, uh, drunk old rabbit in the side of the, uh, corner by the piano. And, uh, occasionally tapping his large foot to music that isn't playing. Uh, <laughs> as, uh, as, as you look around and you realize, uh, that Mary is, is no, is no longer with you. The second that you all left, she fucking bolted. As, um... She's pretty slick for a drunk one. Yeah, something like that. And, um, she, she immediately dipped. And the... You, uh, enter, and the loud commotion. You see, uh, that young, uh, fox lad as, uh, you all, uh, crash through. And you see a number, as uh, you see one of the, the girls that's, uh, walking around on the upper balcony. And, uh, you hear the, the boy call out, Uh, boss? <laughs> I'm just gonna yell his name anyway. Seljan! <laughs> and uh you wait a moment and then you hear like, What the fuck is going on down there? <laughs> uh we fucked up a little bit. Uh maybe we should uh, uh come into your office all 
Nah, one, two, seven of us. Eight of us. And oh, seven. The door I can't count. F- flies open, and you see uh, in onesie pajamas, in red pajamas, bleary eyed with a nightcap on, a rough looking badger, as he sticks his uh, head out, and he walks over, and he looks. And he sees the Skinkerton. He sees Smiles. He sees Mr. Y. And he's like, What the fuck do you do? Um, Get the fuck up here! Yeah, I think Did anyone see you come in here? Uh, no, well, the camp is pretty much dead, which, uh, things are changing around here, Mr. Alabaster. I'm, I'm sorry, but, but, but things are changing quick. I grumble and stop, but stop upstairs. And I'm gonna just kind of drag. Uh, Jesus Phil up. fucking crisp! Get up here! <laughs> as as he uh he ushers you up, and and, uh, and the door slams behind you. As in, and in in his office, you see that there's a uh, a small candle by uh, his bedside on the large uh, office and, and, and com- uh, combined bedroom that he has. As uh, the door uh, into the thoroughfare is cracked open, in a nice breeze. Uh, as you bring in th- three bloodied individuals, and uh, his hold, hold on, let me let me get Dolly, get a tarp, and then uh, she comes in and pull, puts down a tarp, and you use the uh, one that you had gotten from the fox, and uh, you drop down the uh, dead body of Mister Smiles, and then uh, the skink and the weasel are all laid out as well. Uh, now, uh, uh, Mister Alabaster, uh, if if I may, uh, friend, um, I told you. That we would get you a mine. And this? Did you did you kill Smiles? It, no, no, no. Now, now I can explain everything. But ultimately, the question resides down to: Do you want to uh, own and run the Smiles Mining Company? How the fuck do you intend to explain this to the Marquise? Well, Grumley, my good friend here, was able to. Please, Grumley, you explain. And we begin to tell him everything. But I'll see you later. Confessed. And- we we just tell him fucking everything that we not 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 about the amulet, right? right. But we cleared out the mine. When we got out of the mine, Smiles was dead, and and Mister Y did it. We were captured and about to be framed. I tried to convince the group to run away and run to kill everyone, <laughs> and then got Mister Y to sign his uh, his confession. And these are the. Uh, I guess, the fruits of our labor. And Seljan takes in the whole thing as he sits. He's just kind of nodding, looking, and his eyes are going back and forth as he just almost automatically pulls out a drawer and pulls out a bottle of whiskey and pours it and puts it back. And he shakes his head and puts the glass down and pulls out the bottle and takes a huge <laughs> swig. And he, and he says, Fucking vagabonds. Yeah, we 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 made some tactical errors, I suppose. I to be fair, like I said, I tried to talk our way out and just you know leave on the cover of darkness. But my friend Grumley here, he's he's awfully brawny. It was worth it. Now, despite all of these horrible wounds. Now, don't get me fucking <laughs> wrong. A knife in the back improves this motherfucker's character. And he is a motherfucker that needed to die. And the fact that you brought a fucking skinker tin into my fucking joint. For what it's worth, I tried to get that guy killed. This guy was going to frame this guy, and I pointed at Mr. Y, and then I pointed at Phil. 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 He was going to frame him for killing for killing Mr. Smiles. Oh, it's and better I, than I, can't, I couldn't let that stand. But Remember? it was still much better than the four of us taking the fall. That's yeah. right. We got out of it, and we're going to get justice. So I need to know where the local authorities. Justice. Where's the Marquis 8 presence in this one? authorities. The Marquis 8. Now, I had fucking visions. Smiles, the fat cat of some fucking cousin or in-law, whatever the fuck he has back in New Felicia. Hearing about dear fucking cousin Levi's untimely fucking death. And then the cats descending like fucking locusts. But, midst my visions of a camp burning to the fucking ground, I had a brilliant fucking idea. And it's thanks to you... Dumb motherfuckers. I've been called worse, to be fair. Well, what, what's, your, what's your plan? It was the agents of Selgin Alabaster, dear friend, dear friend of Levi Smiles, that put a, 
a right to this injustice. And his dear friend, Levi, would want Selgin to have those fucking mines. I'm sure if we looked hard enough, we could find a deed. A deed? Some sort of, you know, representation of ownership. Did you thoroughly check that motherfucker? Uh, which, which one? The fucking weasel. Uh, well, to be fair, Grumley roughed him up pretty him. good. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I didn't look. I don't. I don't do this search thing. Guess what you guys do? Uh, I just roughed him up. Uh, it was pretty hard to, to search his body while well, you were. Go on and search him. Uh, all right, all right. Now Hazel, help me out here. All right, all right. We'll 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 search. Hey, I'll say, hey, Oh, hey, everybody. Hey, 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 everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Uh, you pat down and you search him, and you had just found the gold, which was very easily findable just immediately. But upon a, th- a thorough search, kept far more protected, you find a blood-stained uh, roll of paper, and it seems to be a deed to all of the various claims of the Smiles Mining Company. Well, a little bit of blood never invalidated one of these. Where the fuck were all of you about three months ago? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah, you don't want to know. That's a story. Do you think you hoopleheads can fucking stick to that? I can stick to whatever you want as long as I'm not ending up in the gallows. Do you promise that you'll treat all these miners better than he did? That you're not going to send them in on suicide missions? I know a guy up at the fucking mine. And he's a, I don't know shit about mining. I know a guy that can run the entire fucking operation. A guy I trust. <laughs> What's his name? What does he look like? <laughs> He's not dead. Uh, pardon me. This is like my Deadwood fan service. I know. Like we've gotten everything we ever wanted out of a Deadwood ending. Aww. He's not dead. He's alive in my dreams. Comstock uh, Sinkshaft. He's a, an old brown fox. He was the one that got duped out of the mind that made all the hoopoes go fucking crazy. He was basically got... They threatened to kill him and his his wife if he didn't sell his claim to, to, to Smiles. So so he can, he can, he can run things then? And, and you'll take good care of him? I, he's, he's a good man. Not the smartest, but that's what I'm here for. All right, I can live with that. All right. Well, um... For, for what it's worth, though, not not to really change the subject, um, but this is the son of a bitch that almost shot me in the face, and I wanted to, you know, you don't cross Booker, but uh, here he is, and Grumley convinced me to keep him alive, I suppose, so maybe you can set him on the straight and narrow. I know he's a stinkerton, but maybe not anymore. He's not getting framed into my watch, as far as I'm concerned, so just m- make sure he doesn't die. Make a persuasion uh, roll. Yeah. He's pretty beat up, but... We know he's good for the <laughs> Yeah. Damn it! <laughs> uh, he looks and he says, uh, If well, any of you want to, you can interfere and give me minus two. <laughs> <laughs> he, a fucking skinkerton under the employ of Selgin Alabaster. Nah, trust me, I did everything I could to get the guy killed. Wouldn't that be a fucking ending? Well, what's his fucking name? Phil, I guess. Phil? Something along those lines. Whatever, that's a stupid fucking name. I didn't change it up in your career. Phil, I guess you have a new line of fucking work. Now, I guess yeah, taking his life would have been a little extreme anyway. I, I was just angry, to be honest that's with you. Right. I've cooled off Don't a little since then. Don't just people for no reason. I've You've killed cut- enough skinkertons tonight. I've cut throats over less. Nah, see? See, this is a man who gets it. Like to do that. Well, no, I'm, I'm certainly no fighter. I mean, you've all seen me. I'm no soldier. I'm not grumbly. I just, you know. And so, we are going to turn over this slimy fucking weasel to the authorities. And you are, will be welcome to accompany him. Uh, uh. A- accompany him to the Maki's Eight? Yes. I don't trust these drunk fucking cat soldiers that they got working out in this fucking mining camp on the 
the Sam Hinnerlands of the dim world. Well, how, how far do we gotta take him? We'll connect with the fucking sheriff in the morning, and we can take him to Wharton. Well, can, can, can maybe we see the map? Oh, yeah, let's take a look <laughs> at this map. So we're here. We're, we're this little oh, raccoon uh, guy. Oh, so we gotta go. Where's the wall? Right there. Right here. It's the cat. Oh, okay. Okay. So we go. Not too bad. All right, all right. Well, I would, it, it is very late, <laughs> and and I apologize for waking you up in your establishment and bringing uh, one dead body and two nearly dead bodies and, well, a whole lot of mess. But you've been good to us, and we hope that, uh, you know, even though we fucked everything up, that, uh, you know, you, you got a little out of it. I got, like, a whole fine out of it, really. Just don't let any, don't ever tell anybody that Booker's Intruder was worried. I told you we'd get you a mine. I just didn't tell you how many we'd get. Well, I... Thought I was fucking crazy for trusting vagabonds of all fucking people, but you all did your end of the bargain. And huh. He goes to his desk and he pulls out the second half of your payment. As I as I take my as off, oh, fucking agree. As I take mine off the desk, right. I'll look at him and say, "Well, uh, yeah, I'd say it was dumb luck, but <laughs> I'd be lying." <laughs> 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 uh, we're very talented, is what he's saying. We, we're good at being vagabonds. Apparently fucking so. And you even took care of the spooky mumbo jumbo in the fucking mine. <laughs> you never I, told me how you fucking did that. Do I even want to know? Yeah, uh, it's one of those things that, uh, better left unsaid. I'll let Comstock take a look at it. But just know, if you ever need us, you got friends. Well... As long as Selgin Alabaster draws fucking breath, you hoopleheads have a place, and booze is half price in the pearl. No, I can oh, I find that very amenable. Uh, and there's nothing saying we won't come back. I have a feeling we might have to stop by here some other time. That's far. Well, have, I to... have two rooms on the fucking house, because I'm feeling fucking good. Appreciate it. So if we, uh, if we get a good night's sleep, or what's uh, left of the evening, um... You, we gotta find a good way to bind this guy up, and then uh, we'll be on our way. And we'll oh, make sure. take care of him. Oh, all right, and then we'll deliver him safely tomorrow. I don't know how, uh, I don't know how far of a journey that is, but we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, well, the sheriff ought to be able to take care of things. I'll be the fucking sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> Could I impose for a can of peaches before bed? I'm awful hungry. It's always fucking peaches with you. Yeah. Fine. Well, sometimes it's peaches, and sometimes it's apples, and sometimes it's cherries, depending on the season. But those peaches the other day were very good. Blueberries. Peaches and fucking cinnamon. Blackberries. Hooza! <laughs> you know, just as a way to really tie it all together. Well, it costs less than fucking whiskey. No, I'll drink it. I'll eat my peaches. I eat your fucking peaches. I have the best peaches. idea. I've got to write this down. I'm gonna put some of the juice from the peach into the whiskey. <laughs> now please get the, the fuck out of my bedroom. All right, all right, all right, all right. I think that could work. I'm gonna scribble that into my little notebook. I'll have a spot of tea if you've got it. Yeah, they'll they'll get whatever you want downstairs. Welcome, Aaron Fox. Aaron Fox. Hey, Aaron Fox. Aaron Fox. Yeah. There's a couple yeah. foxes in this campaign yeah. that they're that they're dealing with. Dolly is a is a young fox. As uh, so Dolly rushes in, and you start to see as um. Mr. Y is uh, is kept in Seljan's office, but the uh, see like Mr. Smiles' body is taken uh, down out back, and then um, the same room where, uh, ironically, the same room where Basil was being tended to from being roughed up by Phil and his henchmen. Uh, Phil is then taken down to uh, for his wounds to be tended to in full fucking narrative circle. Uh, <laughs> are we? Yeah, are we in our room? Yeah, you're in your room. Well, Grumley, um, I appreciate you looking out for us, taking the charge, but uh, please, please try not to get me killed. I I'm just a simple raccoon looking to make his way in the world, especially amongst all the turmoil. I didn't ask for fighting. I didn't ask for any of this scrapping. I don't have any of this sword swinging armor wearing stuff you've got. You did fine, you're not dead. I, it was a rock thing to do, Booker. It Not was a rock thing yet, to do. As I grab my side and wince a little bit. Fine, it was the right thing to do, I suppose, but... It was. It would have been dishonorable had we just left him. 
there would have been a great injustice had Phil been framed. There was nothing That's saying we couldn't stupid. come back. I was trying to buy us time. Do you realize that they could have just shot us dead where we stood? And look who he is the same night and the whole thing's resolved. That's true, it sped things up. I think it would just be a nice thing to do that the next time you get into a, a justice rage, that's what I call them when you go crazy, maybe just take a deep, right. ugly breath and then hold it. And I'll puff my cheeks out real big. And then release. I'm not very good at deep breaths, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's flavorful. I'm sorry. I'm sensitive. I know you've got problems with your breathing. Oh, I'm alright. I'm alright. Well, I'm always exhausted. Um, it's not just this plate armor. Ah, oh, well. Short hazel tread. <laughs> I've got a short nose. What can I say? So, uh, do any of us know if if, if any, any of us have been to to uh, what was it Wimperwalla? Uh, Wartwalla. Wartwalla. Have any of us ever been to Wartwalla? That's yeah, a, we've, that, been that there, a, we've been with the world well, well, tons of times. That's where Peggy's workshop is. Okay, yeah. uh, that was a that was a in character, out of character <laughs> question for everyone at the table. The game master. That means the book is probably not leveling up tonight. <laughs> I will right. say, for the purposes of this campaign, new things will be things that we haven't been to in the campaign. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Because, I mean, it's not like we're going to... It's not one of those... Th I think the game is intended to be you're bouncing around, clearing to clearing, and I'm having it be a little bit more narrative. It's going to take so us time, I, I assume, yeah. right? I mean... All right. So so we've been... We, we'll say, for the sake of book of leveling up, it, it's a place that I haven't been to for a very long time. Yep. It's because been a long time. we've been on the road, and poor Peggy hasn't been to a workshop. But it sounds like... Uh, you know, given the distance, it shouldn't be too terrible for us to make it there in a few days, perhaps. Let me con consult the map again. And then when we get there, it'll be ho it'll be like home sweet home. So I'll pull the map out. It's just this one. This is one path this way. That's now again, uh, uh, out of character, in character conversation. I'm not necessarily sure how much time it takes to get from clearing to clearing, but I imagine we got quite a haul ahead of us with a prisoner as well. Well, hopefully the sheriff can help us out, and maybe... Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting about the sheriff. The company is on a journey or something. Oh, it's, it's up to him. He's the lawman in this well, clearing. Well, we're certainly not going to pull him away from his duties, but you got to ask, if he's the sheriff of this town, things have really gone to shit. Where the fuck has he been? Well, he probably doesn't have any power to do anything against Smiles. Well, maybe now he can finally do his job. Well, hopefully he can. Um, if we're going to sleep, I have several game questions I'd like to ask Yeah. You. So, the Skinkerton Dagger that I picked yes. up, that is a weapon that needs to be used at intimate range? Uh, yes, I believe. I guess, because my question is I can't sword to sword with it. Yes, you can. Well, so that's my question, right? Is is if I have a dagger, what is the weapon move? Because there's there's an age sword to sword, but one of the sword to sword things specifically says you can move to intimate range, and I didn't know if the dagger can only be used in intimate. I think you can do a close range. You can extend. Okay, so so then I can't murder because I don't have murder, right? And so daggers things. intimate or close? Oh okay. yeah. Okay, good. So the idea, right, is that you have ranges, and so like let's say you're you're close. If you just wanted to, like, just walk up to a guy that's against you, you might have to, like, tempt fate to get into intimate because sure. he's, like, on guard, totally. right? So that's a way to get in there for free. Love that. But so you can kind of, I guess you can use it for both. Um, but I can't use my greatsword intimate. Like, if somebody gets in my face, I can't swing a sword at him. Okay. So I need to find a way to back out. Second, and I'd like your opinion on this as the game master, yeah. the your equipment I started with, yeah. I foregone two of them. I just yeah. basically took leather armor. Yeah. The mouse folk short sword says range close, mouse folk steel. I can mark decay on the weapon. It's a sword to engage sword to sword combat with cunning instead of might, which obviously benefits the, yeah. the vagrant. Is there any way you would allow me to keep the Skinkerton dagger and basically replace it for the mouse folk short sword? You examine. The, Is that reasonable? You examine this this make. And it actually seems to be that the standard issue were made by the mouse folk. That it's it is from the steel, the uh, steels forged from the iron that they harvested. But uh, the the Marquis Eight ha it had it's the, the classic um, sneaky hallmarks of the mice, uh, and it is, it is mouse folk. I, I don't want to be that guy and like no, that's know, the whole ideas. point of this. But yeah, like I'm, I'm trying, trying to be creative. The whole like, point is that this is a conversation. Okay, and you're like I'm thinking this, and as a, as a GM, I'm like oh yeah, that makes sense. Or uh, well, let's see. Because it didn't make sense for me to have a, sh a mouse folk short sword and a longbow as Booker. But if I could pick up a sweet Skinkerton dagger yeah. and reflavor it, I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, cool.
I have a question. Yeah. What was the second payment that he gave us? Oh, so we received half before. So this will be a, a satchel of coins for two. Okay. So you should have a bag so of coins. I did, that was at the end of the first session we got. That. Yes. And so then you get right. a second one. So now you get two more. Okay. Two more boxes. So and in theory, are... you have a bag of coins that's for four decay. Right. Yeah. So they're empty boxes if you haven't spent them. And then when you spend them, you mark them off. And you can move them to your decay track if you want to, like, replenish your... Yeah, so you, if you simulate to go out and you're shopping for supplies, you can basically just dump all those and stock up and expend your coins. So if I had two from that first one, two from this, and then the one coin I picked up was a fifth decay, so I, I have five, like, a sack of five decay. Is that how that works? Yes, okay. sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. You need to, like, put all of my equipment in one place. Cool. All right. Okay. So, you awake the next morning. Uh, you clear whatever exhaustion is needed for that sort of thing. Um, whatever happens when you sleep. Oh, that's a great question. What I thought you only. You I think you only recover a certain one. number of exhaustion. Is it one? one per night? But if I would saving Phil, would that be uh, a def- def- my defender? I mean, you, you fucking saved everyone. When I defend someone who cannot defend themselves, yes, one hundred percent, You you defended everybody. You he was you, beaten from an inch from his life by a maniac, and you convinced Booker not to stomp on his face. So okay, here we go. We don't do drives now, right? We only do that at the end. At the very end. Oh yeah, no, no that's that's at the very end. Is it at the very end, or yes. is it when you do it? It's at the end of the se- okay. I think, so drive is the level up, right? Yeah, we've yeah. been doing yeah. it at the end of the session. Okay. No, it is I didn't know if you're okay. supposed to do it at the end of the day no. or like no, at no, the, it's end the end of the, of the session. session. Cool. For that, got for, it. The, for the level, up. which is advancement. Apologies. Which either advancement. way makes sense, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I like we've been doing it. I think it works well. Yeah, I agree. Those rules are written wrong. Okay, good to know. Um, okay, you awake and. And you meet Seljan downstairs. Uh, you see that uh, Dolly's going in. There's a lot of bloody bandages that she's taking uh, away. And um, nice. and uh, Seljan's like, ah, I guess Phil's gonna fucking live. He lived through the night. It's, well, that's just an absolute miracle. I'm gonna probably have to give him another one more fucking sock for Basil, but... Just don't kill him, please. Yeah, no, just, he's he's, he's an employee. Nice kid, you know, a lot. He, he just set him on the, and as long as he's set on the good and narrow, I suppose it'll be all right. I am grateful for every fucking beating I've ever got. It builds character. Nice. Phil's gonna have a lot of fucking character after this, huh? Ah, yeah, you're not wrong. Just don't want him to like be resentful and then turn into a super evil skeet. And I, under this man's watch, that won't happen. Nah. Okay, we'll just keep an eye on I think I'll just threaten him with vagabonds coming back. Oh, that's fun. And we're only ever clearing away. Give or take. Well, It'll be like a kid's tale, like you never know when we're going to pop up. That'll, that'll put the fear of dog into him. Yeah. Of Jesus Crisp. The fucking sheriff. Yeah, what about this guy? Where the hell's he been? He has a a penchant for cards, and it's been a little bit. <laughs> Go on. You all right, man? I've never been better, my friend. And you know these fucking canine you see, types. You see, the eyeballs just turn to like little money signs. <laughs> He's canine. What do you mean canine? Talk? He's a fucking coyote. He's not as much of a bootlicker as you are, but he's oh, they, oh, they, 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 well. they find the <laughs> breathe in and hold it and then snort it out. That's good. That's good, Tommy. <clears throat> and with fucking, he's. I'm glad he fucking did because if he poked his coyote fucking nose and too much. Of what Smiles was up to, he'd have a fucking Skinkerton bolt through his eyes a long fucking time ago. He's a good man as much as I hate the obnoxious son of a bitch. I feel like I can trust him. What I am not 100% sure I can trust is him getting, and he points to the side and you see that uh, uh, tied up um, is is Mr. Y. His, his cheeks are swollen. Uh, his eyes are kind of droopy. 
and he just looks totally beaten up. He's like, he's getting him across these dangerous fucking woodland path with all the eerie flying fucking around without an escort and getting him to the fucking, to the authorities, at least in Wardwalla. Yeah, well, a little bit more fucking civilization with those fucking frogs and toads. Give him to the fucking mayor. I don't give a shit. But as long as we get him to the Maquis 8, with his confession. The Maquis 8, just none of these drunks here. All right. All right, we will we take him to Wawala. Because all of these have been had their palms fucking greased by who fucking knows. Could be this motherfucker. Said, oh, here, we'll take him. And they cut all your fucking throats. Oh, no. We're giving you, you, oh, and Sheriff Octavius. All right. Is that a coyote? Well, I can, I can promise you one thing, is that no matter what happens, Grumley will die trying. Or will succeed. But I'm not dying, I'm just going to try real hard. Well, I mean, he, he would die trying, trust me. He tried to yesterday. <laughs> well, you all fucking survived, and we all survived, and... One more day. Everything fucking worked out a lot fucking better than I was expecting. So are you, are you hoping that we're going to take off... Right this morning, and we have a little bit of time to restock and refuel a little bit. I know, I know there's not much here. Take as long as you fucking want. I'm staying here. I'm comfortable. You think, uh, you know, you might be able to show me how to use this thing. And I slap the singer and dagger on the, uh, you mentioned you were pretty good with knives. I am pretty fucking good with a knife. I'm not really a fighter, and I'm not I looking do. to start, but things are pretty dangerous around here. You don't look I'm, like a fighter. I don't want to be stuck in a position where I'm, uh, you know, flat-footed. If you want to take the morning, I can show you a few things. I'd appreciate that. Grumbly. Hazel, Peggy, we got some time. We need to buy some supplies anyway. We're gonna head out in uh, midday. Yeah, I think that's fine. I appreciate it. I'll have my, I'll have someone fetch the sheriff at uh, in the afternoon. It's gonna be a several day journey anyway. Sounds like a plan. And so uh, you all enjoy stock up whatever you would like to. Uh, Seljan uh, takes you out back behind the pearl. And he shows you a few sneaky moves with the dagger. You're actually, for his age uh, and his size, you're actually pretty surprised at how seemingly deft he is with his blade. I love that. And he teaches <laughs> you a few things. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Booker is impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, so I have a hardy feature. I take one additional injury box and I max is five. Whenever time passes or you journey, you can clear one injury box automatically. Time passed. How yeah. would, would you rule like, I guess once a day I do yeah. exhaustion and injury? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's like a short rest almost, right? Yeah. We're taking time to like do whatever we want. That's time passing. Uh, well, yeah, I guess, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to be too broken, but no. we can talk about how we want to define that. Just don't throw anything at us. And how can I get rid of my injury again? Uh, I have to like... Well, you could trade some of your coin for supplies, to heal up, to bandage yourself. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm sure there's multiple things we can do. So yeah, it's two, it's two decay to get rid of one. Right, so you could spend two coins and mark two decay on your satchel of coins to get first aid supplies or whatever, right? I mean, flavor however you want, however the game master. Yeah. Describe what you're doing, basically, is the goal. Is there anywhere in town where I could, like, sell off some of the scrap that I've picked up? Uh, you get the sense that you could probably find a buyer for some of it, but it might not be as much as, as in other places. Okay. I'm gonna look around and not like my options in this town so much, so I'm gonna take two of my decay and just buy okay. a medical pack yeah. and patch myself up. You do it. Right. You do it. And is there any, like, overtime injury business? I think so. Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head, like maybe I'll say, in that town. I'll say you, you in this time, Dolly patches you up, and so everyone can just take an injury. Okay. As part of a reward. So, oh, okay. well, so we clear one decay? free injury. Keep your decay, yeah. So okay. we'll say one injury. Cool. So you keep your decay. If you want to do an additional one to get rid of another injury, that's also fine. Um, Dolly, you spend some time with Dolly, whoever would like to. And uh, they patch you up. You see Phil. He seems he's he's beaten to a pulp. You see Mr. Y unloaded on this skink. And of course, skink. Um, <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> and uh, and he seems to be pretty grateful. Um, that he's alive, and uh, you know, shocking—a shock to him, a shock oh, to Selgin, and a shock to the game master. Coming to talk to us, 
No, he just. I'm just saying, kind of what you see. He's grateful. He's not talking to you guys. Talk to me. He's not talking to you all. Uh, you all get patched up a little bit, and then uh, you all stock up on whatever you want to stock up on. And it's in the afternoon when um, when you all uh, gather, and you see a uh, an individual step into the saloon. He is a coyote with these uh, patches of brown and, and, and grayish, fur, uh, tawny fur. And you see that he's wearing a black vest. There's two hand crossbows at his side. Uh, and he's wearing a bright red sash around it. As uh, his two po- ears point up through a broad brim black hat. And uh, he steps forward and he looks... And uh, he points at uh, Mr. Y, who's just been kind of stand up. And so, like, now this is the weasel we're taking. And uh, Seljan steps over and says, Ace! And he claps him on the shoulder and says, You do not let this fucking weasel out of your fucking sight until he is with the proper authorities. And these fine associates are going to be with you the entire fucking time, they will tell the story of how I avenged Mr. Smile's death. You've seen the body, your deputy's seen the body, everyone's seen the body. This is the motherfucker that killed him. That's the story. Follow their fucking lead, you understand? And uh, We have a signed confession as well. It has his seal and his signature on it. Not, sir, sir, sir. Not to get ahead of ourselves, but this is Grumley. My name is Booker. I'm Hazel. I'm Grumley, sir. This is Peggy. It's a pleasure, sir. You can call me Ace. Pleasure. I tip my hat. That's my cool nickname. That's just my name, Ace oh. Octavius. Oh, that's a really cool name then. Well, I, it's the first time I've gotten that, but y'all don't look like you're from around here. Not no, even not. close. Where well, are you from, friend? I've lived here my whole life. They honest work, for the most part, working for the Marquis Egg until. Smiles. For that, wasn't so bad. Well, we shouldn't waste any time. Uh, we have the corpse of Mr. Smiles. Should we bring that as well? Now, nah, we'll Santa already sent a letter to the next of kin, off in New Felicia. We'll see if they want us to send it back. Well, could you please keep it at your sheriff's? Building, whatever it is. That's where he is now. Oh, okay, great. That's, I'm just making sure. Deputy's taking Keeping him company. Maybe we'll keep him cool, too, because he's starting to stink. We may take him down to the creek to cool him off a bit. He had a lot of flies on him. It's kind of gross. I think storing him in the creek would be a good idea. I've seen dead bodies before, but not, like, dead dead. Like, usually they're just, like, fresh dead, and then I leave. You know? You've never seen a dead, like, a dead body? Not like an old dead body. Oh. Well, I'm not really a fan, to be honest with you. It's not the best. It, no, it's gross. I've seen it a lot. Well, let's uh, get this get this uh, criminal. Like, you're going to help me carry him. All right. Well, can we, like, is he, is he, can he walk or is he still, like, fucked up? He's going to need, he's, he doesn't need to be carried. But, but yeah, can. yeah. So I'm all, like, helping him along the way and yeah. kind of force him along. But I just, do I need to, like, have him over my shoulder? Uh, no, you just need to give him, him a shoulder okay, yeah. and kind of force him around. So I and he that. stops at Mr. Y and uh, he uh, unholsters a hand crossbow and he says, You want this bolt through your head? All you got to do is fucking move in a way I don't like. And he just holsters it again. Oh, well, that ought to do it. <laughs> and and uh, you just see some uh, terrified nodding. And uh, with your assistance, uh, you uh, manage to collect him. And Seljan says, like, well, remember the fucking story. And you will have a place here at the fucking Pearl. You will have a place here in Reconnoiter Ridge. Well, we thank you again for your hospitality. And, of course, keeping us alive. Thank you for having this all fall into my fucking lap. Well done, vagabonds. Godspeed. Thank you, Alabaster. Gives you a firm handshake, all of you, and says, You're a good man. Don't forget about us fucking hoopals on the edge of the forest when you become legendary wanderers. Oh, dear lord. The bars will sing tales for fucking generations. The ore will die, but hopefully that. 
They'll sing of your terrible, painful fucking death. <laughs> that could be the case. Farewell from fucking Reconnoiter Ridge. You all increase your reputation by the denizens by three. Hey! Yay! Huzzah! Nice. As you begin to leave oh. Reconnoiter Ridge, do you have to pre- do you, do you have to yeah. fill the track or press so over you, it? You have to fill. So okay, so you get five. Right, they I'll reset. Do. So we all should be there. I believe plus one. Yes. yes. So circle plus one instead of plus zero. Okay. Can it ever fall below plus one again? Yes. So if you so, if you fill up piece three, it drops from plus one. Oh, to zero. okay. Got it. So you fill both ways. Yeah, because I've got one one way and two in the plus way. Yeah. All right. So you can, can I steal that. your? Yeah, sure. How do I? So I had four before the one. So I was like here. If we got three, so I go what? Where does that put me? So you had four. I yeah. Four. Okay. So you get three. So you have one. And then you circle one, and then you back. You would clear it, and so now you have one, two. These two would would be full. Oh, I see. So, so now I have to get up. all the way to two before yep. it becomes two. Yeah. So now you need to get to ten. ten. Yeah, it takes very. It takes. Uh, it takes a lot. That's too. And I have, I have a feeling, just based on the way the game is going to flow, that it's it's going to be tough. It's yeah. going to be a lot very very uh, fluid. So okay. now I have two in the plus one. Okay. Yeah. Two here. Okay. Cool. You, Vagabonds, are joined with Sheriff Ace Octavius, heading to Wart Wallow. How will you make this path along the journey? What exhaustion are you going to expend as a group to travel and make your travel roll? Um, so we need at least a what to get, like a 10? A, f- a, a 10 is totally on our own. It is uninterrupted, timely fashion. I am happy to expend two exhaustion at least. Because um, each one we give gets a plus one. Uh, beyond four. So it's minus one until you hit four, four is zero. And oh then it's my plus god. One. Yeah. Alright, well, if we offer up a shitload, I can offer up three. I think we just risk it. Holy fuck, Grumbly. I'd be willing to give one. Grumbly, are you, not, are you, are you telling me you're not willing to give anything? Well, I'm already wearing this plate armor. I'm already at one. Me traveling anyway marks one anyway, so I'm at two just without even offering. Say no more, fam. I'll offer three. <laughs> Hazel will offer one. That puts us at a zero. I could do one, but no, then no, I no, 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 please, please. We don't want you to overexert yourself. All right, well, I appreciate that. I'll get this guy on. He anyway. said with a very sarcastic face. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Booker's already had a three exhaustion. That's okay. He doesn't find his friends. Booker didn't ask for this journey, but he's here nonetheless. Booker didn't want to almost die in Reconnoiter Ridge, but nonetheless, he did almost die. That's what he did. Okay. So we've got a total of four, Game Master. Whoever would like to make the roll. What's that, Andy? Do it. Oh, God damn it. You're more do it. it. Watch, ladies and gentlemen, as the great Booker fails and whiffs. I need a, I need a... Give a flourish. Shasha! Hell yeah! Can I do the Mayan? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking 12! <laughs> fucking 12! <laughs> that was pretty good. Man. Natural 12. I told you, it's the flourish. Natural 12. All right. That was... Limiters. Our limiters, thank God. Unbelievable. I'm very lightheaded after that, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pass out on us, we need you. Hashtag <laughs> worth. Hashtag worth. You uh, make your way along the trail, along the forest path, and you occasionally see, off into the forest on either side, uh, up into the trees, the flapping of wings, towards the territory of the Eerie. You see the remnants occasionally of battle. Uh, Maybe marks of blood or some signs of a scuffle. Uh, But uh, this is a very uh, very brisk uh, journey. We'll say that you you probably have to camp a couple times. Takes a, a few days probably to get uh, along this oh. forest pathway. Oh yeah, let's 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 do it. Give me the map. Give me the map. Oh. So, so what's it like, called? Wart Wart Wallow. So Wart Wallow. Wart Wallow. Nothing. Just Wart Wallow. So you are along the path as you're with uh, Ace Octavius, and you can you know ask you get to know him a little bit, and whenever you want to ask him, you you do, and uh, you eventually uh, see a clearing up ahead. 
and as uh, you get closer and closer to this clearing, you hear the roaring of the river, Old Tom's River, that splits the dimwood in half. Um, it's, the, it's the primary source of travel for the river folk company that seems to dominate a lot of the, uh, the, the traffic of shipping up and down. Um, but you know that there's a lot of other denizens that live along these banks. And uh, you eventually arrive to a, uh, the, the forest uh, on either side kind of gives way to sparser uh, trees. And as you start to see, uh, swaths of marshland all around with tall grass, um, willow trees, reeds uh, blowing in the wind. As you see that uh, directly ahead, a, uh, a large the clearing appears uh, uh, before you. Wartwall, a town built onto the river, as you see up ahead, a huge lake on the southern edge of this town, built onto the side. Massive lily pads stretching out onto the water, uh, huge uh, reeds, as you hear the buzzing of insects. And uh, it, while it's it's marshy, it's not, it's not the oppressive swamp... Um, of, of other clearings, potentially. As uh, you hear uh, not just the, the, the symphony of the insects, but also uh, uh, loud croaking. As you know that Wartwallow uh, uh, is, is home to many frogs and toads. And as you arrive at this with the sheriff and Mr. Mr. Y and Toe, you uh, see uh, a variety of structures, strange wood, and the architecture is very different from the rough and tumble mining town of Reconnoiter Ridge. You see uh, houses built on stilts out onto the water, some built almost on floating on lily pads, and you also see uh, streets and streets of quaint little mouse uh, villages. As you real, as you know that this is a, I believe it's a mouse clearing. Yep. It is. It is. A uh, yeah. As uh, you see that the, the houses of mice, you see similar to. Um, uh, similar to to every other clearing, uh, there's houses in the trees built for the variety of birds. You see a stork uh, flying by, or a heron, uh, maybe a, uh, maybe a whippoorwill, and you uh, make your way uh, through uh, the streets as uh, rather than uh, than dirty, uh, worn miners. You see a, a happy, a healthy. If not uh, a little bit uh, poorer uh, individuals, mostly mice, but a good number of frogs and toads running around of all ages, uh, men and women, uh, uh, small children running around. You uh, as you pass a number of of of, of restaurants and, and bakeries, you smell uh, delicious uh, uh, mouse baked goods. Uh, Drifting on the wind as you arrive, you float. Yeah, you scooby do. You get carried and, and through the air, <laughs> and you see once again a heavy uh, cat presence. Uh, there are cat, uh, there are marquisate uh, soldiers with their their uh, bright orange tabards. So even though it's a mouse clearing, it is still marquisate controlled. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the denizens are predominantly, just like how uh, yep. Reconnoitre Ridge was foxes, yep. this is uh, pro uh, predominantly a mouse clearing. Okay. And you see these soldiers, and rather than looking kind of like the shady, um, uh, the shady, almost kind of near mercenary style of soldiers, these are seem to be a bit more, more standard uh, Marquisate warriors that you're used to. They're wearing their tabards that are a lot, a lot more uh, cleanly, and you see you pass a recruitment uh, center, you pass a field hospital, you see that there is a bit of off, uh, off to the uh, side, you hear the loud hammering of uh, workshops as uh, they uh, work uh, out on the docks and they are, seem to be crafting uh, uh, boats and other uh, floating uh, structures as you make your way uh, to the uh, center of town. And as uh, you arrive, um, you see uh, Sheriff, uh, uh, Sheriff Ace stops and says, well, so where do you want to turn in this slimy fucking son of a bitch? 
Well, for what it's worth, uh, Mr. Alabaster said that maybe we find the mayor or, or something, but but certainly there must be some sort of uh, head head marquis eight that we can speak to and uh, turn this gentleman over and 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 never ever be associated with any of this ever again. I think the mayor would probably be a good spot unless do we know of any kind of like a police station or whatever. You, you know that there is a constable's uh, constable's office. Uh, that is prominently run by by cats. Um, I would say that Peggy is easily able to tell you that um, that this is that the mayor is a toad named Mayor Boghop, and he is a uh, he's a to- he's a toad that's been installed by the uh, by the Marquis Eight as someone who is proven to be loyal and useful, and uh, prides himself on the uh, number of ta- the amount of tax that he collects. From his prosperous clearing. Taxation is left. <laughs> um, so I would, uh, would, can I, would I be able to ask Peggy, like, based on what you, like, based on what she knows, would she have like, an obvious, well, this is where, like, I would rather do this over that. Like, what she knows of the mayor. Yeah, she would have some knowledge, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the most powerfully connected person would be the mayor, and the mayor would be able to help. And it might help to have a prize for the Marquis 8 uh, to deliver it to the mayor, and that could be... Well, a, you, you might even get back in good standing. That's right. I, I think that's a great idea, and the mayor's very powerful. He has connections to the Marquis 8. So, um, Peggy, lead the way. No delay. So, um, you see... Uh, you head to Town Hall, and this is a large, extravagant structure that is built partially of wood, but also of, of mud and stone, and out of these massive mushrooms that are growing out. Uh, you remember the dangerous mushroom that you encountered in the forest? These are very, uh, they're large, but they're, they're, uh, they're not poisonous at all, these massive toadstools. As uh, you see, uh, it just says uh, City Hall uh, in this large uh, sign. As you uh, enter, you see a number of mice uh, walking out and a handful of uh, frogs. And you see that uh, stationed on either side are armored uh, cats as uh, you make your way in. And uh, with the, with the, uh, you are, uh, you are informed that a letter had been sent ahead of, ahead of you to inform that, uh, that, that, Someone with connection to the incident with Levi Smiles would be arriving at the clearing, and uh, you are sitting in the waiting room as this very small uh, bug-eyed toad is sitting behind the desk. You see this large, extravagant uh, oaken door uh, that says uh, "Mayor's Office," and uh, you are sitting in this this waiting room as uh, you s- the 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 six of you. Are awkwardly uh, sitting there. I am severely like this, under. You do? I'm severely underdressed. Yes, <laughs> you're all underdressed, and you see this. Uh, this toad is like uh, the mayor will be with you shortly. Okay. I'm gonna take out a little snack from my pack and just I don't know I'm, like get crumbs all over the place. Uh, I'll turn to Mister Y and I'll say, uh, "All right, Wilbur, you best be on your best behavior." And keep your thoughts to yourself. You're here because of the actions that you did. Let's not forget that. Yeah, crime doesn't pay. And you think there is justice here? He's still kind of talking. His mouth is all swollen from being beaten still. Well, I'm not so sure about justice, but, you know, for how many days we spent walking through the woods, I never got the chance to ask you. What kind of asshole gets drunk after he locks up prisoners downstairs and thinks it's going to be okay? <laughs> Someone who had it all. Grumley beat the fuck out of you. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. I was not accounting for a pug of all fucking vile creatures. Easy Are now. You Watch yourself. What Anyone could have done it. Yeah, but especially Grumley, because he's like but three times my size. Especially me. Yeah. I thought the only risk was all of you sneaking off, these useless skinkertons. I should have known better. I told Mr. Smiles never to trust them. But and I then s- you killed him. Yes, yes I, I did. Be here. Yes, I did. This and is when justice. I- 
And when I'm swinging from the gallows and doing a hangman's jig, will that give you solace? Will that help you sleep at night? It's not up to me whether they hang you or not. It's up to the Marquis A. Yeah, but to jest, I'll sleep better. Well, I'm glad I can give you pleasant dreams. And uh, not much longer uh, as uh, the... The toad says, oh, the mayor will see you now. And uh, the door opens, and uh, you see uh, Sheriff Ace grab the uh, scruff of Mr. Wise's uh, neck and walk him forward and kind of shove him into the room. And as you enter, you see this uh, beautiful office with a huge window that looks out onto the lake. Uh, this massive sprawl in the lake with the beautiful marshlands uh, on on either side, uh, large uh, mushrooms popping up on all, all throughout this marshland, and behind uh, this elaborate desk, you see sh- shelves on every side with a a variety of knickknacks and things, uh, uh, these gaudy gold things. You actually see a statue of. Uh, that's, that's carved and crafted to be a very overly attractive version of this bloated uh, toad creature. <laughs> and in the flesh, you see probably who this person is supposed to be. Uh, you see behind, a uh, in, dressed in purple fineries, uh, wearing uh, huge jeweled rings on every one of his fingers. You see a, a, a golden uh, chain uh, going out of his pocket to her pocket watch. Uh, this... this uh, uh, a slimy green, a deep green skin with several warts and bulging eyes as you see Mayor Boghop. And he says, Well, I received the letter that there'd be vagabonds bringing justice to for Mr. Smiles. May he rest in peace. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Mayor, Mr. Mr. Mayor, sir. Why are we? What an office. We you have... must be doing pretty well for yourself, huh? And I want to try to figure him out. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, make a uh, make a, a roll. Ooh, let's see. What is it? Figure out charm. is charm. Oh, I don't have any charm. Why did I try to do that? Doesn't matter. Um, what did you roll? I rolled a six. I will help and make it. Don't seven. help me, because even oh, on a miss, okay. I can still oh, ask what the most valuable thing they is carrying. <laughs> <laughs> Asking the important uh, yeah. that he's carrying, you at least on immediate, he's not carrying anything. You see that uh, beside his desk, he has a a cane with a gold topper on it in the shape of his head, and um, <laughs> of course he would. And uh, you see that his rings are very valuable as well. The gold in his pocket watch might also be quite valuable. And he uh, he leans forward and says, "Well, I received the letter, and thank you. I am doing quite well. Thank you, darling." Yeah, I can tell. Mister Master, we've apprehended the perpetrator, the one that killed, that murdered Mister Smiles, and attempted to take over his entire company. I have a signed confession right here. Let I'm me see it. To do that too. It's what we did in the Marquis Eight. I don't know. Sure. We did that. He did that. That ease. That ease. And uh, he begins to read it. And uh, you see uh, Ace uh, kind of shove him forward and says, like, listen to their story. They are the ones that brought this to justice. I'm just seeing it through. Everything that they're about to tell you is true. And I'll bring word to the relevant authorities as is my jurisdiction in Reconnoiter Ridge. And uh, you see the mayor just reading, yeah, it is fine, sure, sure. As he's uh, reading it and says, well, that's good enough for me. Now, this is going to be quite the feather in my cap. And what's the story here? Are you sure that you didn't murder Mr. Smiles? No, well, of course not. What ridiculous. are they doing sending vagabonds here? Well, well, more than sure. We have this written confession by the man himself. You've read it. It has his signature. It has his seal. It was not under duress at all. Is this true, Mr. Weasel? We shoot and him a glare. He leans and uh, 
yeah, he sees all of you glaring, and he's a, and there's some hesitation. And Mister Mister Wine nods and says, "It, it is true. I murdered Levi Smiles." So to answer your question, the reason that vagabonds would even deal with anything like this is because the man tried to pin it on us. So of course we got to clear our names. That's right. And you'll give him a fair trial, of course, right? <laughs> a fair trial? This is all I need. Once, once his relatives find out what happened, then find out who did it, it'll be the hangman's jig for him. <laughs> well, thank you all very much. You have done you have done me a great service. You have done the Marquis Aid a great service. I tell you that. Yes, we did. We brought justice to Mr. Smiles and to those workers. And so, I suppose you'll be staying in town for a while. Well, we're certainly not going to just, you know, mosey on through. We've been a long way and we need to rest. Yeah. And I smelled a lot of things out there that I want to eat. And Booker, t- just don't, before we forget, let's just tell them about who owns the mines now. Oh, yeah. oh, of course. I, I apologize. Uh, there's been a lot going on the last few days, but uh, our very, very good friend, uh, Selgin Alabaster, who also happened to be very, very good friends with the uh, Mr. Levi Smiles, smiles uh, you know, may he rest in the treetops. Um, the bottom line is that uh, it turns out Mr. Levi Smiles left Selgin Alabaster everything. So he's running the mines now. So he's the one to know in Reconnoitre Bridge. He's a good man. He knows what he's doing, and he's going to look out for the people, and he's going to make sure that everybody's happy. Well, can I entrust one of you to deliver a letter of recommendation from Old Mayor Boghop? Make sure I'm knowing the right people. Uh, you'd like us to deliver the, le- the letter back to Reconnoitre Ridge? Anyone who wouldn't mind, I uh, would make it worth your while. Again, not to, uh, not, to, not to jump ahead, and as much as I like to make things worth my while, I think that the uh, sheriff might be heading the back that direction. What do you say, Ace? Yeah, I can take. I'll take a letter. And I uh, says, ooh, uh, just give me one moment. And he uh, uh, shuffles around through his desk and pulls out a paper, and he pulls out this uh, large quill, and just gaudy purple quill, and he uh, is just and he finishes and he, he sw- uh, swoops and swirls, seals it with, with purple wax, and hands it to uh, the sheriff. And the sheriff takes it and says, I've done my duty here. This man I know will hang. And uh, the mayor leans forward and says, Well, uh, yes, and if... He'll be lucky if he hangs, but that's not up for me to decide. I will have the, the, the uh, my very competent cat soldiers take care of him, and he'll be marched directly to New Felicia. I trust the Marquise will do the right thing in this case. Mm. Of course. They always do the right thing, eh, Grumley? In this case, yes. In, in this, this one case, they always do this, the right thing. In this one case, my friend Grumley, they always do the right thing. Correct. They always do the right thing, and you know, I am. I will tell you that you are a lifesaver. You are bringing a little ray of sunshine and hope after such a treacherous, terrible period for our town. Oh, you don't say. Oh, oh yes. Uh, we had a shipment of taxes to uh to the Marquisate that just that went missing, and so we have to just pay up somehow, and the, the townsfolk, and especially me, I am bending over backwards to make sure that we are delivering what's owed. Oh, you're paying your fair share is what you're telling us. Uh, absolutely. Or more than, more than. More than, no, I, I, I do not. I put the burden upon myself before I do it upon my people. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, I absolutely so. believable. Can I someone out? Yes. It's all charm. Uh, nine. Oh, what? Uh, Whoa! Uh, You're charming as fuck. I got two charm. Damn! Uh, I got some charm. I got two charm. Holy shit! <laughs> um, I would like to know if he's telling the truth. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Rich. Grumbly need confirmation. <laughs> did did, did Grumbly actually need confirmation? Yes, Grumbly, Richie didn't. Grumbly need confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> 
terrible dragonflies. You know how it is. Wait, what? The dragonflies are the highway robbers? Oh, well, the highway of the horrible, monstrous, fluttering dragonfly out on the marsh. I, We were sending it up uh, down the river to... Is, is this something Booker would have heard of before? Or Peggy. Um, well, I don't want to ask on her behalf, okay. but... I would say that probably both Booker and Peggy would have heard of monstrous dragonfly, just like you would have fought a monstrous spider. So they're you not know. as shocking as the barbarians. Correct. Okay. Right. You know that like they're a danger, and they're out on the in the forest in the woodlands, uh, on you know in the forest on the side of like the river and the lake. Oh, of uh, course. Uh, monsters, dragonflies. You say, well, that's that's certainly a, a tale that is believable and is a thing that exists. I believe that's true. Well, uh, they made off with all of our tax. Every that's, single gold piece. You say that's what my my men said. A terrible tragedy. They lost their lives. Oh. Wait. Well. Why don't we just find the taxes for you, and then the people won't have to pay extra? We well, don't have to pay extra. Well, well of course. No, so we have it under control. No, Are you sure? no need, no need to worry. No, I about. insist that we help with this. And it's not right that all these poor folk have to pay extra just because a dragonfly sunk their shipment. Well, I don't even know if it's still above water. Well, luckily we have someone that can swim. And we can always stop by talking to your men. And he knows a few orders. Yes, I do. <laughs> well, <laughs> that'd be very helpful. I suppose I'll tell you where to go. Uh, g- give me an afternoon. Oh, well, of course. I've, I've always wanted to be directed directly to my death. Oh, that I, I intend to. I mean... <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the help. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> we will be a very great help to you. Oh, I, yes. I, I swear it. And, and Booker's very happy that we played our cards just <laughs> like this. Out in the open for you to just, you know, slit our throats in our sleep. <laughs> I would never do anything like that. I don't do you think I employ the vile tactics of the eerie. No, of course Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And especially not the Skinkertons, all the way out here, away from Reckon Order Ridge. Oh, we don't employ Skinkertons. No mercenaries, no. We I, we are genuine, approved by the Marquis 8. Just the Marquis 8. Those Just very, very Marquis. trustful individuals. I am very, very trustful. They they are the ones that, that allow me to look over this whole clearing with the benevolence of my toad heart. They said, you know what? We don't need a cat in charge. You're a toad that knows how to play the game. And I use that relationship for all of the denizens. So what you're saying is that because you work for the people and we are going to here, be here to help you work for the people, you're willing to let us stay somewhere for free. I didn't say that. No, you did. You're going to take it upon yourself because that's the kind of person that you are. A self-sacrificial individual who will work for the people. Make a persuasion uh, roll. Oh, you deserved more. <laughs> uh, persuade is with charm. I got a seven. So it says that they are they aren't sure, but the GM will tell you what you need to sway them. If you can figure out a way where there's no witnesses here that he cares about, so if you could get a sense that you could like spread the word that he's a benevolent person and like make him look good and say that you're going to do that to the people, that would be a way that you would persuade them. So the bottom line is that I know that we can just stay at Peggy's workshop and try to squeeze this guy. Right, I know that. I don't want it to seem like I'm a blimp. Well, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, what's really important is the people know who we're looking out for. And I know, personally, that if someone of great stature were to do something for us, well, I couldn't shut my raccoon mouth about who it was. Oh, yeah, he's right. We want to shout it from the tree chops. And... If they were to throw in some free booze and drink, and I'm oh, sorry, drink and food, especially food, mm, these uh, rabbit folks certainly know how to bake. Well, then I really wouldn't even be able to, I would have to do nothing but say exactly who that generous individual was to anyone who was willing to listen. And even people who don't want to. Those are just the musings of a vagabond raccoon. Yeah. Hey, he's just a raccoon. I don't know if you noticed, but if you look at him, I don't know if you can tell. I think the eye mask might have given it away. He looks like just like a raccoon, he does. So, 
I suppose the ones that brought justice to Mr. Smiles might be good to have for morale as we collect additional taxes. Not 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 me, of course, but but the the Marquisate as as people have to give up with their possessions and the like. Uh, I suppose if you spread the good word, it could help, and uh, I'll put you up in the nicest hotel that we have. How about that? That sounds like an absolute deal. As long as you say, tell everyone you meet that Mayor Boghop has assisted in bringing justice to the slayer of of, of, of Mr. Levi Smiles. Done. That's wonderful. He's uh, his his uh, slimy hand sticks to you. That's um, that is lovely. Oh, yes, yes, that was a great handshake. Yes, That's lovely. Say, could you show me out your big big window where that nice hotel is? Oh, well, it's not out the window. It's around the other side. Oh, world hey. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. It's welcome. It's super welcome. Amazing. To see so, uh, to everyone that's joining us, we are actually playing a sneak peek first preview of the Root RPG. Uh, it is currently, uh, it's not currently in Kickstarter. It's, it's going not, to be. Yes, it is it's unreleased. Not. It is still kind of in uh, beta. They're develop- developing it for the Kickstarter later this month. So we're showcasing, we're playtesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is, uh, this is a map of where we are. We are this little raccoon meeple. Um, we're vagabonds. We are yeah. vagabonds in the woodland, and so we are yeah. we are woodland critters. So if you're, uh, yeah, woodland critters, they're talking to a, a bloated toad mayor, uh, and there's missing tax money. So there's a, just to give you a quick overview, there's a little bit of political unrest between two major factions of this forest, and we as vagabonds are trying to uh, make our way and carve a little place out for ourselves. So there's a little bit of uh, finesse and, uh, you know, j- verbal jousting that we do. Oh, yes, follow, Thank you for the follow. Uh, follow. Uh, Tino Atino ATTX. Yes, no X. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And thank you more. Uh, welcome, more welcome, welcome, everyone. Amazing sponsors. Yes, Good wonderful ones. sponsors. Actually, in Point Wormwood. You guys are the best. Yeah. So, as we said, do we have ourselves a deal? Yes, we have a deal. Now, uh, Rhodey, he will take you to the hotel and put you up with all of the best accommodations. And the booze. Don't forget the booze. The booze, of course. We and have food. The be- and food, of course. And you have tea. Just, just want the tea. Yeah, whatever you want. Okay. I this is, checking. I know that we've fallen on tough times, but old Mayor Boghop, he has what you need, friends. Friends, as long as you spread the good word that Mr. Mr. The Mayor Boghop is looking out for the people. And we will not stop talking about it. Morale is very important here. You of understand. Course. Of course. You understand. Oh, yes. Well. Mayor Boghop, my new best friend. Well, we will get right on that, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Good, good afternoon. Good day. And with that, uh, you uh, see as uh, four uh, Marquis 8 soldiers, cats, heavily armored cats, walk in. And they grab uh, Mr. Y and start d- dragging him out along with you as you and Sheriff Ace are uh, escorted out into the town square. And uh, you get one last look at the weasel as he's being uh, carried away. And uh, he looks at all of you and says, My blood is on your hands. Ha! Thank you for the rain, for the rain. Thank you for the rain. Welcome. Thank um, you. As he says that, I uh, I just want to kind of tip my hat and say, uh, well, I wish I could say that this wasn't the last I was going to see of you, but that would be a lie. <laughs> and I just kind of like, you know, with a flourish, watch him go. And he is escorted away, and you all oh, enjoy uh, two reputation with the Marquis 8. Oh, shit. <laughs> For That's turning gonna, in oh, the that murderer puts me close. Of Levi Smiles. That puts me close, but I not quite. Cool. Yep. So, I'm one square away. Is it two? Two. Two. I'm going to borrow one of your pencils. Uh, you got it. Pencil. If I can. You are you right? escorted Thank you. to the Windy Willow. It is a large hotel that seems to be built into a large, thick Thank willow you. tree. 
that is uh, that you see a beautiful sign of a willow tree blowing in the wind um, with a little uh, a little boat on the river uh, beneath it. And uh, you uh, enter. You are given uh, two rooms uh, gr- uh, gratis, free fucking gratis. <laughs> and uh, and you are a full spread sure of the food, oh, yeah. of food and, and booze that you like. Well, well, well. Is this how the Maki's Eight lives on a daily basis? I finally feel like we may have arrived. This is certainly nice. Nicer than anything we've been staying at for the last, like, six months. I could get used to this, and I fully intend to milk this mayor for all he's worth. He's a... Are we in our room? Yes, or you're in private. He's a real creep. Oh, yeah. We're gonna squeeze him for every penny we can. I was real frustrated. I couldn't get anything off of him. And he's got a lot of stuff on him. Well, Well, let's not steal from the guy. Or maybe we could. He's stealing from everybody else. So that's the thing. He was saying that the taxes were gone missing from the dragonfly. But I don't think he was telling the truth. You know, Grumley, I don't think he was either. I, don't think I, so. I, I could sniff it out. Something yeah. about the ways that we like, like toad stick. You know well, what I mean? You're getting better. Yeah. You're getting you. You and I have been spending a lot of time together. You, you're, you're starting to understand what it is. You know, this might have been why you were able to figure out that that uh, con I tried to pull on you. It's my nose. It's yeah. my nose. That's how I flavor my plus two charm. I'm, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you never cease to amaze me, my friend, and and I'm glad to hear it. But the bottom line is that we can get a little bit out of him every day that he gives us free stuff. And, and at the end of the day, I feel like it all kind of evens out. Well, as long as he's not just get, taking the free stuff from someone else and then giving it to us. Oh, oh no, that's absolutely what's happening, Hazel. Oh, so now I feel bad. You should have no. said that. No, 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 I, I feel bad. We're doing our part. We're, we're earning our way. And, and at the end of the day, we're taking from the rich and we're giving to the poor. And I very clearly point to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I just would feel a lot better if I could, like... Wrestle a couple of those rings off of his knobby toad fingers. I mean, nothing saying that you can't, except I for the try. fact that you might do the uh, what do you say the the hand ma- hangman's jig. Don't you don't want really to be doing that. Dance. No, no, neither does Booker. Okay, well, maybe we can figure out what he did with all the money. Well, if. So he didn't just buy all those rings and put them on his well, toad fingers. I mean, there's a good chance that he did, but not necessarily with the missing shipment. If we really want to get to the bottom of this, and I'm going to tell you, I don't. You don't? Know. No! I'm Why? Sorry. Are you kidding me? We just fought our way out of a damn mining encampment. I almost died. I took a, a damn crossbow bolt to my shoulder. You seem fine now. I seem fine now. Days later, and I still can't quite do this ah, without it hurting. Well, don't do that then. Yeah. Look at him. He looks fine. You look fine. Don't like it when you growl at me. Like I didn't. That. I didn't. I didn't sign up to get in fighting. We're not. We're not we're fighters. Not fight. We just gotta find the gold. Yeah, we're we just gonna f- find the gold and keep it for ourselves because fools are easily separated from the money. Yeah, we're, but I'm gonna give, give it back. Yes. Give it Maybe back, Grumley! Don't you even start with it's me. It's sort of like we find it and then we take like a finder's fee. We we'll get paid. He would pay us. He, a finder's fee. fee. That's a great way to put it. A hundred percent of what we find because we found it. Well, it's ours. It's just, I saw like a lot of those, you know, little mousy people. They're running around and they. Oh, don't you tug at my heartstrings. Do you have a heart? No, no. Booker does not have a heart. Well, my plan's failing. Yes. I will wait. I think we you just wait and we see what the mayor says. And if he's like, oh, it's some really dangerous, dangerous suicide mission. Nah, I mean, we should be able to milk this for like a month, right? That. A full month. 30 full days of us just chilling here and enjoying the lovely, lovely food and booze for free. That's my plan. Well, we'll see what he says. 30 days is just about enough time for me to get sick of this place and move on to the next clear. Well, I'm going to need, as soon as we can, Peggy to, to patch up my armor and my sword and Well, of course. And everything I mean, else. Look, yeah, yeah, I didn't forget. I didn't forget that Peggy lives here and her workshop is here, but look at what we're at. You know, no offense, Peggy, but I, I certainly didn't expect you to put out like this. I mean, this is all the free food and booze we can eat. And so, then we'll get we'll get to the workshop and we'll spend a lot of time there. It'll be lovely. But at the end of the day, I'm going to milk the mayor for all he's worth. Well, you oh. can do that. I'm in it for the big payday. The big pet? What does that mean? It means finding wherever he took that gold to and getting it. Oh, and keeping it for ourselves. Most of it. Most of it. See, I like the way she thinks, Grumley. You could do a little bit better by working with Hazel. We've got to make sure we're doing good for the people and good for good ourselves. Good for the people. Good, what's good for Booker is good for the people. 
That doesn't make any sense, no good. Just think about it a little bit longer, and we'll get back to that. Grumley, tell me a little bit more about what you want to do. I would like to have Peggy repair my armor and my sword. Good, good. Because look at all these things in it. The, the, all those spiders we killed, it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm totally wrecked. And you didn't say justice once, which means we're on the same page. And I want to get justice for these poor townsfolk that have been, they, they, yeah. damn it, stealing I taxes no, no, from these No, people. that was not the point of the damn it, Peggy. Can we please go to the workshop? And if you would like to go to the workshop and just Or we do can wait till next session. Let's wait until we'll we'll next session. We'll wait until next session. Uh, but I'll say that uh, Rody, the small uh, toad gentleman that works for Mayor Boghop, fetches you. And uh, it's with that that Ace has been joining you for a drink. And he's like, I'll, I'll stay the night, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep, sleep off this uh, hangover and make my way back to Reconnoiter Ridge. So. Hi, Mr. Ace. Yes. Why do you wear that red thing around your waist? Fine, but it makes me a quicker draw. Is that how it works? I've never seen anybody else do that. You live a, a, a dangerous life. I used to. Kill a lot of men. Don't recommend it. Nah, nah, I take that advice. Well, I'm gonna go see if they gotten any cards here. Now I'm gonna make my way out. Be careful. That 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 letter. Getting back to old uh Mr. Alabaster is important. Yeah. I'll be fine on the trail. I know how to stay out of the sights of those birds if without that fucking weasel weighing me down. If there's anything we fine. can do for you, 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 you let us know. Like I said to Alabasta, I mean to you too. You got you got friends only a few clearings away. That's right. Sheriff, yeah. it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your help, sir. Ace is fine. And Ace, just try to keep some law and order in the town. Reconnoiter Ridge, it's a rough place, but I think with, with, with Selgin running things and that, that nice fox gentleman, which I believe is probably the one wanting the the operation now, I think it can maybe turn over a new leaf. Well, we'll see. Maybe there's new life left yet in Reconnoiter Ridge. I'm going to go find me some poker. Good luck. Good Take night. care. Bye. He walks off. It's then that Rody comes in and he uh, guides you out and you see that as, as he takes you through the uh, through the, the town square, this is the first time you've really seen it to its full extent, there is a huge fountain at the center uh, with a huge statue uh, that's spitting up water and it's carved into the shape of Mayor Boghop. As okay. <laughs> and you see that uh, it's made out of stone, but there are patches of, of metal on uh, that it's, it's these gilded metal, uh, all in this his bloated form, still carved and 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 built to be a far more attractive uh, visage of Mayor Boghop. But uh, uh, he's standing there uh, gloriously in the center of this of this town, the statue. And uh, with that, uh, Rody. Uh, gives you directions to where the last uh, shipment was, uh, the, the taxes uh, making its way down the river. And um, and uh, it's a, basically a point along on the, on the far side of the lake into the, uh, into the swamp. Let me go to the map. Yeah. So, so he thinks that we're... Little... So we're here currently. Yeah. We're this little raccoon guy to our viewers. So it's down here somewhere? Uh, to the further, closer to the, uh... This way? Uh, closer no. here. Up, up. Or it was going up the river, apologies. Oh. So it's going up the river here, yeah. To click clock, click clock crossing. Oh, shit. So it's up here. So no, it's not up there. It's, it's just right it's out. Going it's, it's going that way. I see. It's basically on the edge of the, like, you know, past the edge the of the north clearing. edge of the clearing. Yes. North edge of the clearing, got it. So we'd have to go, like, up here. Yeah. And uh, with that, uh, as uh, he as he, he hands this to you, um, you uh, as you're going through the town, you uh, hear the wailing and the crying of 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 mice. It sounds like, and you're like, no, please, please, it's all we have. And uh, you see, kind of down an alley. Uh, an alleyway not too far from this lavish town square, a little row of mice houses. As you see uh, down at one house at the end of the row, as a number of cat soldiers are standing um, 
uh, standing outside, and you see that they're filling up this cart with, uh, you see a large grandfather clock uh, placed in. You see, like, a set, a box of, like, nice china that's being uh, uh, put into the cart, and there's a smattering of coins oh, as no. you see a uh, a cat with his dark gray fur and a, uh, and at, at its side, uh, this, uh, a, a, a large, almost like a whip with nine uh, tails on the end, oh. uh, uh, whipped up with a, a hood on, uh, helping, assisting considerably larger than the other cats as they're just dragging in. And uh, you hear the wailing of uh, others, and like, please no! And, da! and then as you see the, the cat to smack this, uh, this, this, this wailing mouse woman, and, uh... Are we walking directly past it? So you're not directly like, past it, so you're just kind of towards... Down you're, as you're standing in the square, it's down the alley towards this road. Don't look at me like that. Oh, I'm looking at you. Don't look at me like I'm that. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Grumley, what, what's the matter? See, that, see what's going on down no, there? No, 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 Grumley, I don't see anything. We proceed. He's nodding, he sees it. No, no! Oh, I see it. No, I'm taking your belongings! Just because you're not looking at something doesn't mean you can't see it. You're just choosing not to see it. Grumbly, it's none of our business what's going on down there. All right? Look at her little mousy face. What do you want us to do about it? I just, she just is probably somebody's mom like Grumbly. Are we working for the Marquis Inn or are we not working for the Marquis Inn? Well, we, we are not just... working for the Marquis we should make well, sure that they're not taking more taxes than they should. Maybe this is fair, maybe it's not, but we don't know until we ask. Who, who are you? Damn it, Grumbly, come back! Damn it! I'm going to go up to this little And I'll chase after him. I'm going to follow behind him, doing the same thing. No! Um, you, see, you see the uh, the mouse woman, she's wearing a bonnet, and she's, uh, she's crying, and she's holding her cheek as she goes back. A dejected, hanging her head, and you see peeking out the corner these two young mouse children, um, all of these uh, these brown furred mice. As uh, the cats are loading up this cart, and uh, you see that there uh, these two just armored soldiers, and then the one with the the large uh, whip at the side is is uh, has this large clipboard, and and then with a pen checks off something as you approach. I was so then. Time out. How big is this cat compared to our boy Gromley? Uh, bigger. No! no! That's a big cat! <laughs> it's, um, you know like a Russian blue? Uh, the NEDM cat? Like uh, the big, thick gray fur, like, yikes. thick boy? Is that bigger than a Maine Coon cat? Uh, probably similar. It might probably similar, but it's like a big, a Maine chunky... Maine is like a small lynx. Yeah, no, no, this is like a is big, it? chunky, like uh, Russian blue cats. cat. Well, yeah, a lynx is fucking huge. Oh. Compared Excuse to a house me. cat. I mean, a mean like lynx. Man. He's got the leather hood and the whip on the side. No, 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 Easy then, buddy. Come on. Come on. Hey, uh, hey. I would like to know, why are you whipping these poor people? Yes, you're asking the very large gentleman why he's beating Why are you man. getting into Mocky's A business? We are collecting taxes. Well, as it happens to be, we are under the orders of the mayor to find the missing taxes. So if you're collecting additional taxes because of that missing shipment, I must implore you to stop immediately and return these possessions. Now, 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 my very, very large furry friend, what my good friend Grumley here means to say is that we're all being a little too hasty here. And I give him a very desperate smile. (laughs) Uh, how does that work? Uh, all I'm doing is I'm trusting fate to see me through and hoping that uh, Grumley doesn't get his ass handed to him by uh, this very, very large uh, cat. I would like to try to like disarm him. Like, okay. You know, not disarm him physically, but yeah. you know, charmingly disarm him. Uh, roll the, the business. I'm trusting fate yeah. is what it is. So that is a, a basic move a basic yes. Yes. called charm. trusting fate. I rolled with charm instead of luck, though. Right. Makes it real good. That is going to be an eight. Woo. An eight. Okay. Uh, Did you scrape by with that? Well, I mean, seven to nine is a pass. Oh, I thought it was. Sorry. I well, was no, no. Let me that. see what. It, well, what does it say? Trust feet. Yes. So on a hit, I scrape by, and the GM will tell me what it costs. <laughs> So, <laughs> it looks like he's going for his whip, smiles. and as you butter him up, he rolls his eyes, and he removes his... his give ball, him a toothy wreck his, his hand. Um, 
Uh, but he glowers at you and says, You lot haven't obviously heard of the Cat of Nine Tails. Hmm. Is yeah. that who you are? Is that like a storybook? Whatever the mayor told you doesn't matter to me. I, I work for the Marquis 8. I'm from New Felicia. I've been sent to collect the taxes that failed to make their way where they should. Now, you, I am remembering your face. Oh, well, I must. You well are do- very lucky. Yeah. That I am not lunging forward at you right this second. Let me do. I could your- snap you in two, raccoon. Now, hold on, hold on. Oh, uh, please, Grumley. Yeah, don't let him kill me. Said, the taxes that went missing, they will be recovered. There's no need to do this. These people have already paid their taxes. Isn't that right, Miss Mouse Person? Yes, we paid our taxes. Shut up, you! Look, she paid her taxes already. I don't care if she paid them already. I care if the taxes make their way to New Felicia. Can you That's give, what I care for. Then give her three more days. I will be in town for the next few days collecting the rest of my list. And you see a he turns his clipboard and there is a number of families, ton, dozens and dozens and dozens of families. So just so we're all on the same page, uh, Mr. Scary uh, Marquis 8 person, um, if we could, you know, somehow reclaim the missing taxes, you wouldn't need to take these extra taxes. Is that correct? That is correct. And we have your work. That's how taxes work. That's all I care about. I've been told to bring the taxes, what what are owed to New Felicia. Three days. Three days I'll be in town. Right, Bromley? Three days. Three days. We'll get those taxes in you. Please stop what you're doing. And we'll have the mayor put you up in a nice hotel room with all the booze and food you can drink. Uh, We will. I ain't stopping. No, you need to stop. You need to. If they've already paid their taxes for this month, and the, it was part of the shipment they got lost. And what he means is that why spend three days just wearing yourself out when you're just going to have to redistribute all the taxes? Very, very smart, Hazel. Because wear yourself out. You're going to go and get et up by a giant dragonfly. Oh, no. <laughs> please, please. You think you think that's what we're going to do? We I have a list of what has been taken. You bring the taxes, we'll return it all. I'm continuing my job. Grumbly, I think that means to just the next be the way that it is right now, all right? We'll get all of your possessions back. Don't you worry. Oh, you better man. keep a good inventory is all I'm God, saying. God, we're going to try and die, I guess. Good luck. Yeah. Okay, on to the next one. We're just, just, oh, just next door. Don't have to walk very far. As uh, the cart gets wheeled next to, and then you see that there's cowering mice kind of peeking out from the next window, and you hear the <laughs> bang on the door. Grumbly, uh, a word over here. Oh, and, I, wow. and I point away, like, you know, away from the houses and the people, maybe off to the side a little bit, and I wait for him to uh, approach. I will approach. I climb up on Grumley, like like on his shoulders, and I'm like, damn it, Grumley, son of a gun! And I'm pounding on him. every single time I swear we do this. You why 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 why, get off me. why do why why Grumley? Why do you make me do this? I'm not making you do anything. You are you are Grumley. You're putting us in the predicaments that we don't need to be this in. This worthless mayor isn't stopping these people from collecting taxes. Worthless mayor? Well, yeah, of course the mayor is worthless. He's not clearly in charge here. Did He's you hear stu- the poor little mouse? I heard the poor little mouse, but what do you want us to do about it? Well, you gotta just... It's terrible when they cry and then they bake and then the pies get over-salted because the tears go into So the what? Mix. Now you think we're gonna... We're gonna... We're gonna... Are you gonna, gonna just ruin all off, the pies? We're gonna trade salt into that? the swamp and go face some dr- giant dragonflies and hope that, that somehow we're gonna miraculously recover all of this gold. It might be an adventure. It might be an adventure? That's all you have to say? We're gonna I get really paid. don't like oversalted pies. We're gonna get paid. We're gonna get paid. Is that all you ever say to old Booker? We're gonna get paid. And that is all I said. You he think that's enough works. to get me to be in on it? Well, yes. you'd be right. Yes, <laughs> that is enough for me to be in on it. But I don't want to die. I can't enjoy the gold if I'm dead, Grumley. All, all I want is to retire somewhere on the river and enjoy a nice sunset with all of my gold. 
amongst all this turmoil. You, How can I do that if I'm dead? You think one puny jo- dragonfly is any match for us? One puny I really single-handedly smited, smote, Grumbly, smited. Grumbly, 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 let me stop you right there. Have you ever seen a dragonfly? Uh, they can't be that different from, from giant spiders and giant dragonflies. Oh, same idea. oh, so you're just assuming there's only going to be one. Or two, or three, or two. We can handle it. There's four of us. We're all capable. I just look at Peggy and say, "This dumb son of a." Okay, okay, okay. There's no we... need for name calling. <sighs> I, I, am going back to our beautiful, beautiful hotel, and I am going to drink until I can't see straight, and then, and then, my friend, we'll have a conversation about dragonflies. Yes. <laughs> and I stomp off towards the hotel. <laughs> what's what's our partnership thing? Uh, you saw? Oh, it's it. Well, actually, it just says. So here's the question I had, right? Uh-huh. It says when you figure them out, you can always ask, "Are you telling the truth even on a miss?" Okay, so when you're figuring me out, okay. But but yeah. I feel like it shouldn't be that way because you saw through my con, right? right? And it doesn't make sense that all of a sudden that I would magically have insight into your brain. I would even say it would be both ways, if you okay. want. Okay. Please. If you want to try to figure out. I'm going to try to figure figure Booker out. Okay. Oh, for <laughs> shit. Pretty good. That's a pass. You like a so, so what would you like to you what? Uh, you get 13. You get three uh, questions then? I get three questions. Go ahead. Right. So you're already stopping away, but you just... Yeah, I, no, I, I no, it's fine. We're having a conversation. It's good. Uh, so... What does your character wish I would do? <laughs> Book of wishes for once in your goddamn life. You'd keep your flat faced nose out of other people's <laughs> businesses, putting Booker into mortal danger. Uh, okay. Uh, Squished up nose. <laughs> how could I get Booker to, uh, to be at least amenable and go, would not fight against the plan to get these taxes back. Grumley would have to convince Booker that there is not a great risk of mortal danger. Otherwise, Booker's not opposed to doing the right thing. Booker's worried about th- needlessly throwing his life away. And then one more. Uh, what is Booker really, f- really feeling? Booker's conflicted. Booker is very conflicted okay, uh, because, and I'll, I'm willing to give you more, uh-huh. he, he understands that there is injustice. He's not blind, right? But his nature is that he wants the easy score mm-hmm. of, of the money. And, and even if that means not doing the right thing, it doesn't mean he's guiltless. Got it. If that, okay. if that helps. Okay. But Booker's going to go drink for now. And he's, oh, go on, then. Be that way. And I just kind of like wave my hat in the distance <laughs> and I just keep going. You do that. What do you do? Um, what should we do? What time is it? Uh, it's probably approaching sunset. Well, we would await word from the mayor, so uh, we told him we'd give him the afternoon. I suppose we just follow behind, give him some space. So that's not awkward, but we'll follow not too far behind, but then. <laughs> We'll let him get like yeah. way far away, and then we'll go back. To or I'll, I'll, yeah. So you, I'll so yeah, you time. have the general just the last time the they the ferry was seen or the the riverboat was seen, right? Okay, and then you you all make your way back uh, to the hotel. Booker's drinking. What do you do with the rest of your day? Wait, so we're not waiting word on the mayor. No, no, no. So Rody came in. I just skipped it. Basically, okay. he says he's like kind of like, oh, it's here. That's the last Got time it. we okay. saw it. Got it. So, th- so that's our information. That's your information. And so it's it's a a, a bend in the river, a stretch that's pretty treacherous. That you know uh, that it's kind of marshy on all sides, but it's treacherous. The, the tree cover is thick, and you know there's things like giant beetles in the swamp, lampreys. Um, uh, massive dragonflies. Well, uh, I, I know we got here a little late, which is why I started drinking, because if this is my last day in the Dimwood, I'm going to make it a good one. We can head out in the morning, I suppose, if that's our course of action. If you like, up a bit. If I, what, what is that supposed to mean? It sounds like a fret. Oh, ah. fret, Hazel. What? Watch yourself. You just, you have a lot, that's all. Yeah, and I'm basically <laughs> immune. <laughs> 
All right, you watch yourself. I'm not my, my own self. All right? Hey, you'll be fine. Are you winking at me or are you seeing two? No, I'm, I'm scowling at both of you. Ah, oh. <laughs> all right. Well, I think we can enjoy a nice, comfortable sleep tonight. Let's enjoy the room, get an early night, get lots of rest. And then in the morning... Be eaten by dragonflies. We can set out, maybe swing by a Peggy's workshop. You mispronounce be eaten by dragonflies. kill some dragon... It'll be, it'll be fine, Booker. We're in, you're going to be in no danger. We might have to kill a dragonfly. They might be long gone. If we just take a little boat, maybe you talk to some other guy and be like, Oh, hey, remember me from way back when? We take a boat out. Mm-hmm. Peggy goes and swims around, finds the missing boxes. She ties a rope. I... Um, do you really? honestly believe that I know all of the otters? Well, you say that you know otters, so I just assume you know every otter that's on the river. At what point in time do you realize that half of the time I'm talking out of my ass? That's I a don't think, trick. I guess I, I guess half the time I know that half the time you're, you're talking out of your ass. Okay. So roughly a quarter of the time. Oh, great. Well, then I guess we'll see how this conversation with the otters goes tomorrow. I think it'll be fun. Oh, yeah. I think it'll be I, fun. I bet I, you do, I, I Anyway, it'll be fun. We'll, it'll be real quick. We just, Peggy will swim around, find them. We pull them up with my muscles, and that'll be that. That sounds pretty easy. And we oh, can help them. Very easy, very easy. Four right. mouse people. Yes. They yes, didn't the four mouse people. people. I don't no. want to hear yep. any more mouse crying. It makes me, like, feel bad in my heart region. Do you think anyone likes to hear that? Well, I don't know. The cat looks pretty... Pretty pleased. That sadistic son of a bitch. Yeah. He threatened to snap me in two. He did. It was really rude. Oh, I'd like to see him try. It's a big cat. I, I don't ever want to see him try. What a, what a guy. He's not. I'm not going to let him be a menace to these people for long. I hope you're right, Bromley. I hope you're right. All right. Well, I should probably. Sleep without my armor on for once. So I'm gonna like just get down in regular okay. clothes for the that. first time in a long time. You do that. And get into a bed and I will pass out. Okay. I think I'm gonna take a, a little walk before bed. Walk off some of this food. I'm, I'm gonna sit here and have another drink or two and I'll find myself uh, in bed sooner than later, I, I suppose. So I want to walk out into like the town square area. Mm-hmm. How is is there still a lot of people milling about? Uh, at things? this point, it's not that late into the evening. It's probably about like nine o'clock, and there's a number of people making their way. Uh, some people are are they might be fishermen heading back home, or some people are are making some last minute purchases at some of the stores that are just like trying to get that last purchase before they go to bed, uh, before the stores all close. And yeah, so it's about, it's not, it's not super bustling, but people, you can see that a lot of the mice and the frogs are, are kind of sad and they're trying to, they're counting their coins that they have left if the cat and nine tails have hit their, their house. So they're trying to, to, to get the deals that they can. Okay. I want to sit on the edge of the fountain and just pull a snack out and okay. kind of wait for the crowd to disperse. Okay. You do that. And I'll say that the evening, um, that, uh, so you're continuing to drink? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay in the hotel room and basically just, like, you know, continue to uh, consume, you know, and imbibe because it's it's rare that we have this much available to us until I, you know, I'm ready to go to bed and pass okay. out. I'm not so, doing anything. So, uh, Grumley, you're, 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 so you're drinking uh, at the bar. Grumley, you're settling into to bed uh, in your normal clothes. Uh, it's, it's hard for you to immediately fall asleep. <laughs> um, as the, as you're not asleep yet. You're not asleep yet. Okay. As as you wait, as you're sitting, you're pulling out a snack, and you're waiting for the crowd to disperse. And as the clouds part, a nearly full moon uh, uh, almost illuminates this uh, the city, and you see that uh, there are these street lamps uh, filled with these own bioluminescent. Uh, uh, fireflies of some kind and uh, bits of of mushroom that at, at night you, you in the day they seem normal but at night they are glowing and there's this beautiful uh, a beautiful hue a colorful hue to this town at night as you start to hear uh, from a lot of the frog homes uh, this beautiful musical croaking uh, it's incredibly peaceful and uh, Grumley and Booker you're into a drink and you're waiting and the crowd is dispersing Grumbling, you're trying to sleep, and then suddenly you hear a loud bell. 
going off. Clang, 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 clang. And you're awoken immediately. And you just see people immediately rushing to their homes. And you hear uh, a loud a bullfrog roar. Get to your homes, dragonfly! And, uh, bang, 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 clang. Oh, and, yeah. um... And Grumley, you're able to just take a look out the window. Uh, Booker, you too. Um, Hazel, you manage to see for a moment as a massive shadow uh, shades almost the entire square as you hear a loud coffin is buzzing. And you zoom, a massive shape uh, passes over you. And you see a dragonfly. You had seen giant spiders. This thing is at least twice the size of the giant spider that you had killed. As it flies, massive red eyes, uh, a, a moth filled with these horrible uh, proboscises and, and, and mandibles dripping as it just buzzes over. People are cowering, looking up as the moon uh, illuminates it, as it casts the silhouette, as it flies northward up the river. And that's one session. Holy, Holy fuck! Holy. What a great oh, fucking yeah, yeah. Oh, God damn man! Ah, that was great. Oh, oh wait, you. before before we do anything else, because we missed it we last level. Oh, we'll level up. We have to do advancement. Let's do advancement. Not level Yay. up. We're, let's do advancement. Who advanced? I so think I advanced twice. So, so tell us, tell us okay. what you did, and let's so, hear what the game master and, says. Up to Game Master, but uh, Greed, you advance when you secure a serious payday or treasure. I would say the, um, like, the, the gems. And the like, reward. I think the, the, the getting paid would be a payday, yeah. Okay. And then Ambition, you advance when your reputation increases with affection, which happened yeah. a couple times. I don't know. I would it assume that only once. happens one yeah. time. So. Yeah. Wow. So you can advance a, mi- minim- a maximum of twice, right? Yep. And one so for each of your yeah. lives. And what do I do for that again? So you can choose either a uh, stat up to three. And uh, in this game, there are three stats. There's Charm, Cunning, Finesse, Luck, or five, sorry. Charm, <laughs> Cunning, Finesse, Luck, and Might. Uh, you can choose one of your weapon skills, which are various kind of special weapon attacks. Uh, and then you can choose one of your regular kind of class moves for our viewers as well. Um, so, so I can choose two because I Due to two. your generous uh, ruling of Wonderlust. It's been a while. We've de- we've de- I, I, have, I have come to a new, or clearly we haven't been to yeah. a very long time, uh, the question is thrills. You advance when you escape from certain death or incarceration. I would say 100% that counts. 100%. I would say Booker you came very close to death. You were literally incarcerated. And or incarceration. Yeah. I mean, we, we were almost... You were literally incarcerated. Were incarcerated. All right, then I gained two levels, or two advancements. Uh, I also leveled up twice, I believe. Uh, I advance when I pursue and achieve justice for someone deeply wronged by another powerful den- uh, denizen. And I advance when I uphold my sense of personal honor at great cost to yourself or your allies or Booker. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> oh, you, or you all advanced twice. What an action packed wow. session. Holy so, shit. so my next Good question job. is do we want to share what we're thinking? Or yeah, do we let's, want to keep let's it talk about it. Let's talk about it. Do you want to keep it as. All right. Or we'll talk about it for Advancers and Chill. That'd be a fun. Ooh. Oh, yeah, we can do that. So, what is Advancers okay, and, and Chill, Mike? Chill. And don't forget to mention Sent Over. Oh, so, uh, yeah. so Advancers and Chill is the special sub only perk. We're going to shut down the stream and then start it back up for a sub only stream. It is sub uh, September, so uh, sub subscriptions are half off. So feel for free to subscribe. Tier, for a tier one sub, it is half is fifty yes, percent off, 50% right? off. For, the, for the month of se- September. So if you want to see what we're going to talk about after the stream, which is going to be how we're le- how we're advancing, thoughts on the session. We do our favorite part. Our we favorite answer parts, your questions. We, we answer your questions. Right. Mm-hmm. You can sub right now for. Fifty percent off, or if you never steal. you've never joined in in a sub only stream, you get five minutes for free. So you get a little and taste. You can see what you like. Get a little taste, you like just it. enough to get you hooked, and then you can sub Timber to us. Oh, thanks, oh, thanks. Thank you so much, buddy. For Twitch Prime. Miss Appreciate buddy. it. Appreciate it. So we're gonna be switching over there shortly. We are so 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 happy everybody came out to watch. Yeah, thank you all. We're, we're playing the Root RPG. Uh, which is a power by the apocalypse system every Wednesday now for a few months. Yeah, for so, a while. So Prime is on a hiatus. Our normal thing is on a hiatus as we play some roots. So if you liked what you saw on stream tonight, you're going to get an opportunity to back this lovely, lovely RPG yourself when we get more information about Magpie's Kickstarter that is coming up. 
Yeah. And we're only three away from 100 subscribers. I yes, forgot to three mention three subs that. Away. So we are, we are, well, now we're probably only two. Oh, or thanks, well, Zeke. Let me, let me we are very, very close to 100 subs, which would be a huge milestone. That would be awesome. It, you know, it doesn't, you know, it's it's just a cool little thing. You know, it's it's certainly nothing nice official, milestone. but yeah, oh, it's, it's a cool. Right. We are 97 subs uh, uh, total, which That's means we're three, three subs away, away from, from, from 100. So maybe sub sub September will make it happen. I keep wanting to call it subtober. Yes, yeah, October is my favorite month, but it's September. September. So we're switching over to the sub only stream. We love you guys. This if is not, we'll see you on Sunday. September, join us. If not, we'll see you Sunday for Strahd. Oh, yeah. Sunday for Strahd. Uh, Curses on you. Sunday, Strahd. noon Eastern time. See you guys.